Ladigo. El mundo quiere dinero. Money world. Se arregla con dinero. Money world. Si me quiero educar, eh, dormir en algún lugar. Un lugar para trabajar. Eh, y si no hay para emigrar. Todo money, money, todo el dinero Solo un par de gente se lleva el botín entero Money, money, pasa verdadero Si tienen la verde siempre llegará primero Pero llegaremos antes o después Solo a lo suyo, que Dios te la fe Que por más que tarde lo veré caer Somos malos buenos y tenemos fe El dinero ya lo veré No vendo mi alma, lo lograré Seré el más grande, no olvidaré De donde vengo ni cómo voy Money work El mundo quiere dinero. Money world. Se arregla con dinero. Money world. Yo digo las cosas como son. No quiero ninguna, ninguna aceptación. Tampoco vengo a pedir perdón. Porque mis sentimientos se volvieron la canción. Yeah. No me vale mucho como tú me ves. Sabes, tú me llegas solo a los pies. Para mí ser grande es un interés. Ser un buen humano para mí es un deber. El dinero ya lo veré. No vendo mi alma, lo lograré. Seré el más grande, no olvidaré. De donde vengo ni como güey. Money world. De corazón, de corazón, la plata no te hace ser feliz. Ella es de corazón, de corazón, la plata no te hace ser feliz. Money world. What's going on, everybody? It's that dude named Dave, and I am back with TDD Live. It is Friday. Before we get started, I gotta make sure I'm not struggle streaming. Press a one if you can hear me. Press two if you can't. Let go, y'all. How's everybody doing today? It's Friday, y'all. It is Friday. We are in the house. Glad to be back. Right. Let me see who's in the building. We're just getting started here. It's Friday. The weather is crazy out here in Chicago, y'all. It's janky. It is snowing out here. It is cold. Ooh, Lord, I'm just glad to be in right now to be chilling and whatnot. So let me see who's in the building. We got Rose. Zoe Rose in the building. What's going on, Zoe? I see you. Happy Friday. T. Lee in the building. What's going on, man? Glad to see you. Got Chucky, TDNT, and TDND in the building. It's Friday. Yeah, I see you, brother. I see you. Sheila's like, happy Friday. Try what's popping, Sheila. Sheila Day One. We got Sheila Day One in the house here. Once again, Chucky. Yeah, I see it. We got Jurgen in from Germany. I see you, Jurgen. What's popping, my man? Got D Samuel in the house. What's going on, D? What's popping? Roy Jones must have forgot what's going on, man. How you doing, brother? Sheila can hear me. D. Samuel can hear me. Jurgen can hear me. Okay, okay. We getting there. Emmanuel's in the building can hear me. Okay, okay. Yeah. You guys see the thumbnail, guys, right? Guys see the thumbnail. You guys see the title. Is six figures. Is it all? Is is that the bare minimum nowadays, guys? Is six figures the bare minimum? And 
Meg the Stallion, y'all. Believe all women. Oh, it's crazy. We're going to get into it, guys. We are definitely going to get into it, man. We're going to get it. I got to see who's in the building here. It's Friday. Let the chat build up here for a second. Got to do a little bit of house cleaning here before we get started here. Like we always say here, if you guys walk into the building here, whether you're on live or you're part of the playback committee, you know, replay gang, press the like button. Likes are mandatory now, y'all. <laughs> if you guys are sitting here watching, and you guys are relaxing, getting it in, getting your drink on, getting your smoke on, get chilling, whatever case may be. I don't beg for supers, but I will beg for the likes. It's for the YouTube algorithm, guys. It's for the YouTube algorithm. So please, 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 likes up. They're much needed. It's a necessity for being a successful YouTuber, guys. Y'all just don't know. Y'all just don't know. So like we say here, guys, likes up, guys. Likes up. Next order of business. If you guys miss any content this week, because sometimes you guys don't get the notifications, go ahead and go to my channel after this live stream here, guys, and then check out what we got here. You know, I said I dropped a reaction video, uh, no, a Kendra reaction video yesterday. That was an interesting one. Oh, boy. Y'all got to check it out. I'm not going to give you all any details on that one. You guys got to see it on your own. This girl, this woman, whatever you want to say, she was out of her mind, guys. She put more important onus on a man buying her flowers. She kept repeating. I'm not going to give you too much of the video, but I'm just going to give you like a taste so you guys can understand. She wants a man to be in tune with his emotional side. Oh, yeah, y'all. His emotional side. Anyone else? What else is too, guys? Like I said, she rather have flowers every single week. I'm going to give you one more tidbit for this video. So you can go check it out if you haven't watched it yet. She said that she was dating a man that was paying her rent, giving her $1,000 a pop here. But she had issues because he couldn't remember to go to Kroger or someplace to get a dozen roses. <laughs> yes, yes, y'all. Yeah, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. But if you guys didn't see that video, you guys got to give that a check out, okay? You guys got to check it out. It was crazy. I probably should say that one for a live, but hey, things happen. I knew I couldn't go live yesterday, so I dropped it as a reaction video. So shout out to everybody who has seen it. And if you haven't, you are in for one, guys. Oh, yeah. Let's see here. What's the next thing that I got to talk about here before we get to the show, guys? I mean, I long stroke y'all too much here. You know, we might just get to the proceedings proceeding really, really fast, guys. You know, uh, let's see here. Let us see. We did that. We talked about that. Um... Oh, yeah. You know what, though? <laughs> I got I, I got my moet today, y'all. I'm ready today. Oh, yeah. No tea today, y'all. No tea. Just let y'all know. Look, full bottle. You can see the glass. Just poured it in here. We are ready today. So depending on how things go, this could be a short live stream. This could be a long live stream. All I know is that I am chilling today. <laughs> That's what's going on here. What's it here? What's going on, Terrence? Get to the chopper now. <laughs> what's going on, brother? Glad to see you, man. Glad to see you. Glad you're here, man. That Moet dude named Day says DNT saying, Hey, I like what I like. I can't help it. I used to tell women back in the day that, hey, I'm a simple man with simple pleasures. When I like something, I rock with it. And that's all it be. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you know, we're going we gonna, to we gonna work on this moed for today's live stream. I hope you guys love the stream today, guys. I hope I can give you guys, you know, some entertainment, break away from your daily lives. And also, we can expire and figure out a few things that's actually going on in this world today. What's going on, Chris Black? How you doing? What's going on? Hey, before we get started here, we got my man Terrence Franklin here coming in with the first sponsorship of the show for today with the $5 super sticker. Check it out, guys. No questions or comments. He just came by for just the straight up love. Hey, Terrence, start off the show right here. Hey, brother. Salud. Thank you, man. I appreciate the holler, man. I'm like other content creators. I really do appreciate it, man. Thank you again. Thank you. You guys just know I'm mad humble when y'all show the support. 
But y'all show your boy some love. You know what I'm saying? Y'all keep blessing your boy. Because you know what, though? When y'all bless your boy like that, I got to keep coming back. Or I got to keep the string going on longer. You know what I mean? That's right. Salute, brother. You know, when y'all do that, the string goes a little bit longer. I come back an extra day or something like that. I drop an extra piece of content. Y'all just don't know. We got to keep pushing and keep going stronger. But thanks again, Terrence. I see you, man. Thank you. What you say? What's going on, man? How you doing, brother? I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. Okay, guys, let's see here. Oh, I got to recognize the cash apps, too. Just got a cash app from my man, Thomas. He dropping the two ninety nine, dollars but brother, I'm going to upgrade you to the $3 holla as well. I know my camera can't really focus on it, you know, because it fades out the background here, but my man came with the two ninety nine three dollars $3 holla. No questions or comments. My man just came with the cash app, the straight love as well. <laughs> My man Thomas. Hey, brother. Hey, salute. Thank you for the holler, man. I appreciate it, man. The catch ups go a long way as well. What you guys don't realize, too, I'm not, you guys can do what you guys want, right? I, I recognize everybody. The cash apps go right to the bank account right away. We get that right away so we can go ahead and do what we want to do here. The supers and when YouTube cuts us the check, we get paid once a month. Between the 21st and the 26th is when YouTube cut the checks. So just letting y'all know whatever y'all feel comfortable with. But I appreciate it. No doubt here. Yes, indeed, y'all. Yes, indeed, y'all. What's going on, Bucky? Watching from Bangkok. Yo, that's what's up, man. We got Bucky in from Bangkok, man. Show my man some love, Tribe. We, you know, we gonna we gonna get him in with the ain't ish crew. Getting started here, man. Bangkok's in the building. We worldwide, y'all. We worldwide. And shout out to my man, this is uh, Nees Faiz here. I know I mispronounced your name. I apologize, man. Love your show. Love from London. Keep it real, bro. Another London cat in the house, man. I appreciate you as well, man. London is in the house. We all over. We ain't just in the United States, y'all. We just ain't from the shy where I'm at here. We ain't Midwest. You know, we everywhere. You know what I mean? The tribe is growing. We building one person at a time. No doubt, man. I see you, Thomas. Yeah, no doubt, man. Salute. I appreciate you, man. Thank you very much, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our clock's in the building. What's going on, man? I see you, man. Thanks for hopping through. Let me do this here, guys. Give me one second. We just getting started, y'all. The show, if anybody comes and say, well, I missed, you didn't miss anything. We're just getting started, y'all. I'm just getting the thing going here. Yo, we're going to talk about a few subjects here, guys. Well, you know, what's going on, T. Lee? We got a couple of subjects to talk about here. Six figures and believing all women. Or because I'm in the, I'm a black man, I'm in the black community. The subject for me is actually, for a lot of us here, is do we believe all black women? Because Megan, Megan's hurting you. I mean, the case ain't over yet, y'all. You see me all rocking back and forth here right now. I'm rocking. But you want to know something? Megan's going to, you, 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 Megan's making it hard for any woman to say, believe all women. No. No matter the outcome of this case here, we're going to talk about it. We're going to discuss it. What's going on, Jay? How you doing? Ain't tried to assemble. Yeah, I see it. I see it. We assembled here, y'all. Hey, let's get to it early here. You know, we got a small, intimate crowd. And, you know, it's going to be early. We'll see people join in the, in, in, uh, in the chat here as we get this going here, because we're going to be here for a second. Uh, the TDND roll call, city, state, zip, area code, rep, where you're from. You know where I'd be at, Chicagoland suburbs, stand up. See what y'all at here. You know, let me know how y'all Friday's doing too as well, guys. Y'all ready for the weekend? Before we get to get the show started, we're going to get to these two video, a couple of videos. We're going to get to this, the topics at hand. So how's y'all weekend getting ready? Y'all ready for it? It's cold. It's snowing in Chicago. I'm just curious. Otherwise, I can get straight. We can get, get, get the business started. She's doing a Chappelle show. Please believe me, says Terrence. Right. That, that's what I was thinking about when, when it's going on. When to Chappelle's like, I didn't mess with that girl. Please believe me. Hey, man, we're going to talk about y'all. We're going to get into it. Derek's like, this migratory case at the Super Bowl, the bow, the sexes. <laughs> yeah. You're right, man. What you say? Dallas, Texas. I hear. I see what you say. Dallas represent. Jay is here from Memphis, y'all. Sheila's like, I'm ready for the weekend. You can see me. I'm, I'm taking a few more extra sips of normal, guys. I'm ready, y'all. Cause it's so good. 
It's so good. Oh my God. It just, the way it just smooths down the tongue. Pause. <laughs> Who else here, y'all? Let's see here. Thomas in Dorchester. I see you, man. Emmanuel's here from Bowden Rouge. I see you, man. Yep, Bucky, you mentioned Bangkok, but lives in, is that Chiang? Okay, cool. Chucky also in the UK, chilling. I hear you, man. What you say? It says cold in Texas. About to travel to Portland to see the grandchildren. That's what's up, man. Got to see the peoples. It's cold in Texas? How cold is it actually in Texas? What you say? I'm curious. How cold is it in Texas? Because we got snow, y'all. If I, we were raining for crazy like the last few days, and I said, as soon as it gets a little bit colder, we're going to get that snow. And it started coming down yesterday, y'all. You know, I know Minnesota got like 30 inches. We didn't get Minnesota snow, but you know, I'm just kind of curious, you know, gentlemen of culture in the building. What's going on, man? How you doing? Coming in blazing. Coming in blazing. I think we're about to start the show, guys. I don't know if I feel like long choking today. 47. You call that code. Hey, come on, man. Come on, man. Are we serious? <laughs> 47. I wear white beaters in 47 degree weather. <laughs> hey, come on, man. Come on. You can't call that code. I sweat in 47 degree weather. <laughs> That ain't cold, man. That ain't cold at all. Yo, we wear windbreakers in 47 degree weather. <laughs> hey, man, you you playing with me right now? You play? I'm, I'm I'm literally laughing. This ain't no fake laughs. Oh man. She was like, "Yep, Dave." And some and some came down this morning. I heard blizzard like snow coming for next week. Ah, man, I ain't trying to hear that next week. Come on, Sheila, stop playing with me, Sheila. Derek's like supposed to get down in the 20s in Houston. Y'all going to get 20s in Houston? Ah, oh, man. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. Our clock says almost 68 in Houston. That's not bad. Wait. That is not cold, what you say. That is not cold. <laughs> Getting the show started this Friday, I'm telling you, that is not cold. How cold is it where I'm at right now? Where are we at in Chicago right now? Hold on. Where are we at? She is like a 28, feels like 19. Right. Hold on. Let's double check in here. I, I'm not second guessing you, Sheila. I just want to already committed here. Actually, Sheila, well, where I'm at is 27, and it feels like 14. <laughs> you a little bit, you get you got a little bit warmer on me, Sheila. Where I'm at is 27 and 14, man. 47 ain't cold. We sweating 47 degree weather, brother. Hey, man, I didn't mean to go off topic here, but, yo, you killing me, guys. Y'all killing me. 47 and cold. Man, you ain't built like us, man. You ain't built like us. <laughs> Jurgen's like, we have negative 2 to negative 10 degrees. I know Jeremy gets cold, Jurgen. My uncle was stationed out there in the military for over 20 years, and my nephew was out there for about three years. I know how cold it gets in Germany. Y'all can talk. Y'all can talk. Derek, like, is when y'all from, what are you saying here, Derek? Hold on, I got to pull it up. It's like when y'all from up north called 90 degrees hot. It, it depends on the 90, but up north, you do you know how Chicago gets down? We get to like 100 degrees, and then with the, the humidity, we'll be in the 110, 114 range, y'all. Y'all don't get it. We get the hottest of the hots, and we get the coldest of the colds. We got the extremes here. Y'all just ain't built right. Y'all got a man up or a woman up. Sheila knows. Anybody here from Chicago, Chicagoland knows. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop messing with y'all, man. I'm going to stop messing with y'all. <laughs> y'all going to go talk about 47 and cold. I can't stop my show talking about that. What's popping, Mona? How you doing? Tito in the building. What's popping? <laughs> 27 is freezing. Well, where we at now is freezing, but it ain't 27. It's 14 now. <laughs> If we got this thing called wind chill. We got this thing called the lake effect. Lake Michigan, y'all. <laughs> What's going on, TV? 75 was popping. Man, y'all ain't built right. Wait, Mona, you from Detroit, right? Mona, I think, remember, last time you told me, Mona, you're from the Midwest. Mona, Mona's from Detroit, I believe. If you correct me if I'm wrong. But if, if, if she told me that. So if Mona's from Detroit, she understands. She's a next door neighbor. She's in a, a drive three and a half, four miles away from us in Chicago here. 
she knows what we talking about man come on brother you can't say 47 is cold you want to know something hey real talk 47 degree weather i'm wearing this outside and i'm sweating <laughs> hey for real i wear this in 47 degree weather and your boy is sweating in about 10 to 15 minutes walking downtown Y'all gotta stop playing, man. Y'all ain't built right. Yeah, yeah, y'all, y'all ain't built right. <laughs> oh man, T was like, I'm I'm Chicago and Chicagoland area. So you know, TB, you understand what we go through here. Yeah, Tito's like packing, get ready to fly to Vegas this morning. Tito, you're going to Vegas. Congratulations, brother. I'm glad you said that because I'm gonna talk about my Vegas trip coming up next month. Hey, Tito, where are you going? First of all, wait, I know you go to Vegas, but where are you staying? A, B, how long are you going to be in town? And C, what kind of debauchery is my man Tito Huffer going to get himself into, guys? <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Mona's like, yes, it's 25. Here. Yeah, didn't Mona, you the same. You next door. You should have the same. You have the same weather as us. And if anything, if we 27, 25 sounds about right for Mona. <laughs> yeah, Derek's like, Texas broke the last time. It got under 30. Yeah, dude, y'all grid got broken. Y'all, y'all ain't built right. Y'all don't know how. Derek, out here in Chicago, there was one year where we had this thing. Well, not one year, multiple years where we had this thing called the polar vortex. Where it just gets so damn cold. It's like, whatever. All right. I never forget that my electricity went out in my house working from home when I used to work for JP Morgan Chase when they said it was freaking like 14 degrees. But with the windshield, it was negative 15 the first day. The next day, that polar vortex, we got the negative 35 degrees. And I never forget, I know she remembers this like back in 2014, 2013, around that time period, we got to the negative 40s with the windshield. Polar vortex, look it up. Y'all got to build yourself up. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Red Pill Jones in the building. What's popping, man? You didn't miss nothing because we just got started. We j I'm just shooting the breeze right now, guys. I just We just went live. I'm, I got a couple of things to talk about. So I figured I'll talk to the tribe for a few minutes before we get the show started. You know what I mean? Mona's like, I got the thick, thick socks on today. I feel you, Mona. You got to have the thick socks on, man. She was like, I was outside here looking like an Eskimo. I hear you, man. I hear you, Sheila. Oh, we that polar vortex was no joke, says Mona. Yeah, you remember that, Mona? It was like, man, it's 2022 now. So about eight years ago, nine years ago. But we've had them many years. Y'all need to look up polar vortex. That's what's popping, yo. Sydney Brown's like, that polar vortex was 2014. Thank you, Sydney. Sydney remembers. I knew it was 2013, 2014, Range. Yes, because I was living in this one townhouse at the time. Thank you, Sydney. How you doing? Appreciate that. Yeah, it was. It wasn't right. Texas, y'all need to get y'all weight right. Y'all gotta rebuild y'all grid. Y'all gotta get ready for this because yo, climate change, it ain't going anywhere. It ain't going anywhere. We got Dilly in the building. What's popping, man? We got Dilly, New Jersey, nine seven three, Brick City, man. Mona's like so cold. The car is not starting. Damn, you know I know them days. I remember them days. Mark's in the building. What's going on, man? So when leave Ohio and it's nine degrees humid and go to Vegas in August, there's 117 degrees. Feels good. Oh, yeah. Mark, I've been to Vegas last July when every day was a buck 14. <laughs> hey, man, <laughs> I know what you mean by that. Jay's like that air horn. <laughs> what can I say? The air horn. You know what I mean? Got to keep it going. He's saying like, all good. OK. OK, guys. It's Friday. A lot of news going on. A lot of stuff popping off here, guys. A lot of things going on. A lot of things. Let me do this here, guys. There's Megan Thee Stallion on her court case. Oh, boy. Oh, Megan. Oh, Megan. I got to say it like that, right? Oh, Megan. What is she doing? What is going on in this case here, guys? Give me one second here. I'm just getting my stuff here pulled up. Oh, Megan. Oh, yes. Before I get that going, because of Tito here, I'm going to Vegas next month, guys, in January. Before I forget, Zick, what's going on, Zick? Just dropped the 45 degrees here. I'm staying inside where it's safe. 45? You need to be safe? 
Oh my God, y'all ain't built right. 45 degrees. We walk around in white beaters, tank tops in 45 degrees. Oh my God. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, guys. Let's start off with Megan Thee Stallion first, guys. What's up, Quick? How's it going? Got Quick in the building. <laughs> Let me do this here. Give me one second. I don't need the music on right now. Hey, guys, let's start off with Megan Thee Stallion. This case is crazy. This case is crazy. Because with Megan Thee Stallion... No matter the type of person you are, right? Whether you're a man or a woman, whether whatever your position is as a man or a woman, before the, the trial started, before anything came in place, right? Whatever story that you believed, then you were part of that persona of society. For instance, if you uh, were... With Meg the Stallion side, you have her hotties and things of that nature. Everything that she said on Gail King, on social media, everything that came out right, you were on Megan's side, and so you supported all black women, right? And it's so funny, though, that if you just found any kind of holes in her story, you didn't believe it, whatever case it is, some don't sound right. You're just like, I, I think, I don't think Tori shot her, or I don't think the way it's going down. You know, you were part of the patriarchy. You are part of not believing the protect black women who need to be protected. You are on the negative. You were on the opposite side of the community. If you said that, hey, I rock with Tory Lanez, or this story doesn't sound right. You know, you know, because it, it it's, it's a polarizing situation before the court case happened. Because let's just let's just put let's call it a, call it what it is, right? Megan Thee Stallion's a star. She is a star. And prior to the situation here, Tory Lanez was a star. Right? Y'all may not be fans of their music or what they do, right? But they're stars. Like, Tory Lanez, when he dropped music, people listen. People stream. You know, before the pandemic, people go out to see this man perform. All right? He was moving his way up the charts. And ironically, though, Megan was moving up, but this situation catapulted her to, you could say, almost superstar status. Like, you can't miss her. Like, even if her music is not chart-topping, she has endorsements. She's on commercials. She is a pitch woman. She is all over the place. So we can actually point a correlation that even though that she was successful that this situation here moved her up the stratosphere you know like, like i mean let's call spade a spade here she's she got popeye's chicken of her was it her hottie sauce you know what i'm saying <laughs> you know she 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 really moved up here right but i want to i want to talk about a couple of items here when when we talk about the idea of believing all women I've had, we talked about this in the past, about believing all women and having these discussions, right? And I have always said, I'm not going to be a man that says believe all women. When I said this before, not even on the show, when I said this in public, I've got people looking at me crazy, like, what day? What are you talking about? What, 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 what? What? And I said, yeah, I double down. You will never hear me say believe all women. Ain't no though. I'm gonna double down even more and say you will never hear me say believe all black women, even though I'm a black man. <laughs> oh no, 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 no! You're never gonna hear me say that, guys. No, no. Know why I say that? Know why I say that, guys? Try. You know why I get? Know why I do that? Because by pushing this narrative, by saying believe all women, believe all black women. We need to support the, the uh, protected class, right? It takes the onus away from that group of people from actually ever telling the truth. Do you think that every single person tells the truth 100% of the time every single day? There's a reason why they have these things called white lies. But imagine if someone who was a, a most trustworthy, honest person who just told white lies from time to time. But what happens when they knew that they were part of a situation that if this situation occurred, I just got to say something. Y'all going to believe me. 
I may, I might embarrass myself, but if I just manipulate a few words here, twist my story a little bit, or say a few things, y'all gonna believe me. Why? Because the mantra and the hashtag is believe all women, believe all black women. That's bad, y'all. That's wrong. That is dangerous. No, I, I take it by a case by case basis, right? Before we go, before you hear anything, right? Before you hear anything, I'm like, all right, there's her side, his side, and somewhere in the middle is going to be a truth. Before I even hear anything, before I hear anything, what's going on, Paul? What's popping, man? Paul Kirk in the building. I see you, man. Pooh, man, what's going on, man? I take it by a case by case example. I'm never going to say believe all women. You know, I'm going to, I never will say, I'll never say believe all men because you know what though? Some of my best friends were the biggest goddamn liars out there. <laughs> I had this one dude who grew up. My man used to lie all the goddamn time. He was still a man, 50 grand, and we rocked with him every day. I know, this is how old I am, guys. You see the gray hairs, because a lot of guys older than me, but I'm showing my age when we were younger as kids. And we were like, I, I told this story before. And it was like, yo, man, I had a Sega Genesis. My man had a Super Nintendo. He had the original Sega. But then he going to say, I got TurboGrafx-16, y'all. Could you imagine a kid when Turbo Graphics first jumped off? He's like, you got Turbo Graphics 16? Yo, we got to go over your crib. We got to go over there, man. We got to play the game. Hey, mom's tripping. Every time we want to go by, mom's tripping, can't play. Hey, come on, man. Stop playing. I, you, how you going to claim you got the Turbo Graphics and no one can see it, man? <laughs> but the point I'm saying, though, is that people, we got, I got friends I grew up with that lied all the damn time. Right? We rock with them, but I never believed him. Whenever he talked, like, we didn't say, believe my man here. It's like, yo, that's just such and such, man. Like, when he told the truth, it was like, oh, man, he told the truth. <laughs> but I, I, I'm, I, I keep it consistent, guys. I keep it consistent. And that's what every one of us should do. We should never say, believe all women. Or because we're, I'm in this black space here that we believe all black women. Because I know that some women are going to say that's not fair, that's not right. But no, we need to take things on a case-by-case case example. Hence with this Meg Thee Stallion situation here, right? Let me keep it a buck with you guys. I knew this case was crazy in jeopardy when she did the Gail King interview. Which was basically a whole cluster you-know-what of a lie. She used Gail King in reference to believe all women so that she can get the emotional support to get that support, the court of public opinion, so that when they went to the court case here, when he's when he selecting jurors, she's going to have more people on her side than on Tory's side. What am I talking about here? One major item that I want to go on that is a major sticking point in this case here that Paul was talking about here. He said, Paul says, they would be giving them immunity to all allies. That that would be giving them immunity to all lies. Okay, I see he double talked there. Yeah, so Megan told a lot of stories on Gail King when she interviewed. And here's the thing, though, guys. She did not have to go on Gail King. She went on Gail King to go on the offensive, right? But here's how I want to chime in here. No matter of fact, before I even do that here, let's do this here, guys. To set the show here, I want to play the video interview of Gail King, and then we'll get more into the discussion here. Get the likes up, guys. We're just getting started here. I got time today. I got a little bit of time today, you know, so we're going to talk about this. We got other things, too. It's more of like a variety show a little bit today. I got things to talk about and everything. We starting off with Meg here, Meg Stein. Get the likes up here. Let's do this here. Let's play a clip of the Gail King interview that I'm going to, uh, that we want to use here for the topic of discussion for this Friday here, guys. Let me pull that up. Give me one second, guys. Let's pull up Gail King and Megan Thee Stallion here. All right. We got that going. Let's do this here. Okay. I want to play this clip here and then we're really going to get, we're going to get more into this discussion here regarding Meg here. So here we go, guys. What was the nature of your relationship with Tory Lanez? Because he has led, led people to believe that it was a, 
sexual relationship, that it was, uh, that you two were dating? What was the nature of We were of your, not dating. We were really name? close. We were friends. We hung out like every day. And his mom passed too. So when I felt like we were bonding over, over that. that. Mm -hmm. And did you have an intimate relationship with him? Like sexual? Yeah, yeah. Did you have, <laughs> did you, Megan, did you have a sexual relationship <laughs> with Tory Lanez? Yes, that's my question. Um, um, I didn't have a sexual relationship with Tori. So why do you think he's putting out the story that the two of you had a relationship and that you're making the whole thing up? I think that he is trying to deflect from the fact that he c committed a crime. Tory Lanez pleaded not guilty to assault and weapons charges related to the shooting. We asked his attorney about Meg. Okay. I knew that was a lie from the gate. I knew that was a lie from the gate, y'all. Right? You know why I knew that was a lie from the gate? Not just the way she responded. Not just the way that she responded. I'm going to go back to 2020. When Tory was popping. When Tory was in these streets. When Tory was getting in, when he had his quarantine radio, hey, y'all don't know, quarantine radio, before this whole case came about here, he was getting it. He was getting viewers, subscribers. His IG was popping. He was doing the damn thing, y'all. But you know one thing that occurred during this quarantine radio? He had got sick. Now, correct me if I'm wrong or not, I think he may have caught the vid. He got sick, I know, during this time as well. I can't remember if he caught the vid or not, but... Megan was staying at his house or supposedly supporting a sick friend. There were videos where I was seeing when they was doing the quarantine radio where she was hanging out and they were dancing and they was in this kitchen, they were in the kitchen and they had the camera going and they were just rocking and, you know, she was twerking and they was body rotty, hotty, hotty, body rotty, hotty. He was doing his thing. And you know what I said to myself watching these videos during the quarantine? Because when we were locked down, all we had was watch videos. All we had was YouTube and any social media to keep us going because we couldn't go outside because we were locked down. You know what I said when I was watching them in 2020 together? I said, those ain't friends. They smashing. Even though no one ever came out saying, I'm together, I'm dating him, or I'm dating her, or things of that nature. I'm going back to the genesis of 2020, guys. When I was watching that, I was seeing him on quarantine radio. She was over at his house. Ain't no other, no other thing that came in my head. You guys remember during the quarantine, we weren't supposed to be going out much, right? You only went to the gas station. You went to the grocery store. Or if you was an essential worker, you was out and about going to work and, and stuff like that. In my neck of the woods, they had barricades shutting down the highways. Like, yo, we don't want nobody driving, all right, unless you have to. We're going to cut off certain highways, things of that nature. And my think was during that time period in 2020 when the world was shut down, you, if you were single and you was over somebody's crib, you opposite sex, I'm thinking y'all smashing. <laughs> And then another thing, too, that she said in her interview, she said that he was dealing with death in, in his family. She's still dealing with the death of her mother. He said they were trauma bonding, right? So when I heard this part of the interview, when I hear someone say we were trauma bonding and you're the opposite sex, I'm going to tell y'all, agree with me, if y'all agree with me or not on this one here. When I hear trauma bonding on the opposite sex, I'm thinking y'all smashing. Because think about it, when you're dealing with emotional situations, death in the family, anxiety, whatever it is that the trauma that is going on to you guys, right? And you're dealing with all these emotions. And then you find someone else who's going through some problems who's actually listening to you. And you're going back and forth, give and take, and they become more of a support system for you and vice versa. Those emotions that you're dealing with, that trauma, opens you up to that other person. And next thing you know, when you're trauma bonding, that's a whole whirlwind of emotions where that if it's the opposite sex, y'all going to be smashing pretty damn sweet soon. <laughs> So that's what I noticed here when I saw that in 2020. Before the trauma bond, I'm like, oh, they getting it. They getting it. So when I see this Gail King interview, I'm like, wait a minute. You ain't smashing. You ain't you ain't had no sex. He just a friend. Lie number one. Because why are you going to lie about something that seems so evident? But what happened, though, in the in, during her testimony, guys? I'm going to get some of these chats in a second. I got a few more videos I want to play. But what happened in her testimony? We can't believe Megan anymore because she had to come out on the stand and say, yes, we had a sexual relationship. And as a matter of fact, 
Here's what's even more crazy. I'm going to play the video so you get I, – I, I know that the video I'm going to play gives a better context with the situation that's going on right now, right? The fact that she hooked up her best friend, the whole situation, her assistant, Kelsey, with Tori. Meg went behind her friend's back to smash Tori. So during 2020, Tori was with the best friend, but behind the back, Meg went and started smashing Tori. Oh, God. This is such a messy story, guys. It's such a messy story, but I know that there's an, I have another video that's going to even that's gonna break it down even more if you guys haven't been following here. A lot of you guys have. Let me get to some of the chats here, guys. I want to get to another video. Let me see what you guys got going on here. Quick 504 in the building with the 199. We're going to upgrade you to the $2 holla. Says, better believe she's going to lie to you. <laughs> Facts, quick. Facts. Hey, brother. Hey, quick. Salud, man. Thank you for the holla, man. Thank you for the support, man. I appreciate you, man. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. Donat says, that's a no. I don't believe man or woman. All people lie. Thank you. That's what I'm talking about. All people lie. Zick says, I almost picked the TurboGrafx-16 for Christmas, but I was advised to get another system. That was good advice. Yeah, man. It, it was popular at the time, but they didn't have no games. We see how long that lasted. <laughs> But you get it, though. We were kids, though. And if you knew someone who had the system, you're like, oh, my God, Turbo Graphics 16 is on and popping. But he never showed it to us. He's still our friend. We just never saw that system. And he lived next door to me, too. That's amazing. It wasn't like we had to go across town. Matter of fact, he was two houses away from me. So it wasn't like he was far away, guys. <laughs> Let me see. I'm just going to get back to some of these comments here. Hold on. What's going on, Washer Game? It was popping. SW247, what's popping, man? Theo, the dude better podcast in the building. What's going on, man? D Sam says suspect Dave with pause. With pause them. Um, I don't understand that, D Samuel. Red Pills, are, how lit? How was lit, Dave? Real talk. Okay, facts. Okay. Sorry, I'm just I'm just trying to read up on these comments here, guys. Just getting caught up. Hit the like button. That's right, do better. Help me hit the like button, guys. Credibility says watch gamer. Yes, exactly. Team Peterson in the building. What's going on, man? Med cap the whole time before the trial. Exactly. Mm -hmm. What's going on, Derek? How you doing, man? I see everybody here. Trey's like Megan really living that life. That most wop. Rod, what's popping, man? Yeah. Ben Simmons was hitting it too. Haven't played a game since. Played good since. Yeah, man. Everybody hitting Meg. That's what's crazy. <clears throat> everybody hitting Meg. Everybody hitting Meg, right? Okay, let's. I'm, I'm, I'm all caught up here. Let's say Pooh Bear says one thing Tori did incorrect was smashing hood girls. Well, you know what? Pooh Bear, I got to disagree with you. This is not hood girls. This is the industry. Pooh, this is the industry. In the industry, everybody has sex with everybody because people got something to lose, and you rather deal with somebody who understands the lifestyle than someone who's outside who think is clout chasing, right? Kelsey is Meg's assistant. Meg is in the game. You know what I'm saying? So these ain't hood. They 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 are hood. If you want to get technical, they are hood, but they're not hood girls, if you know what I mean. This is the industry girls where everybody is sexing everybody. They're not trying to go on the outside and add someone in. Hence, because they think they're going to build someone's career. I'm not trying to say that this is the situation with Karuchi, but Karuchi was a regular girl. No one knew who the hell Karuchi was until she started dating Chris Brown. And you see where she is today right now, right? She has a career because she was Chris Brown's girlfriend. She's maximized that and, and probably that to shows and things of that nature. But I'm not saying that's hood girls. You know, there's a distinction. There's people in the industry who moves and date with who they want to date with here. Derek's like, didn't get the notification, Dave. I just jumped and saw you was live. Yeah, man, YouTube is playing like that. I kind of realized that, you know, when I first got started and I saw the low, the low people here, I knew that notifications weren't probably getting sent out. So I figured I just got time today and we'll see who shows up, you know, just looking around this time period. Don't worry, guys. I got some news coming up here. So you guys will have to worry about notifications here in the future because I'm planning some things out here. Hold on, before I keep going here, guys, I got to take a sip. For everybody who's new coming in, I was doing that little diatribe. We got the Moet, y'all. Y'all boys, hey, no tea today. We got the champagne tea. Oh, boy. Oh, that is so good. I know I had to do that to y'all. I love my Moet. Get the likes up, guys. I was doing a little break then about Meg here, right, and about the Genesis in 2020. I don't want to hang on to that because people have heard that. I just want to get my two cents on there because I haven't touched the story yet. Right. 
But when she lied on Gail King, before she came to court this week, I knew we had a problem, guys. I knew there was a situation here. Like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. And then the way she answered it, did, huh, what? But she had to tell the truth this week, right? So she wouldn't perjure herself. So she wouldn't perjure herself. But what is the point of going on Gail King and then when you take the stand, you say something 180 degrees? How can we believe you? Because you went on a diatribe for the last two plus years to say, please believe me, believe all women. Right? But if we did that and hearing what we're hearing this week, even though the case is not over, we could be sending Tory Lane to jail for 22 years over some shady, messy BS. Over some stuff that young people just sexing everybody, just being irresponsible and moving and being sexually free and liberal of your bodies and just banging whoever. And then when the stuff hits the fan and then everybody fighting. It's ridiculous, y'all. It's ridiculous. Because if Tory Lane was actually guilty, I'm like, yeah, he got to do the time. I'm talking about, too, you Canadian, you a foreign national. Yeah, you can't do no crime and expect that expect anything to be good for you. Hence, Brittany Griner. This is almost the same situation almost, and you know, in reverse form. Brittany Griner got the crazy sentence. Of course, we just got her home. But why she get the crazy sentence? Because she's an American and that they had to ax the grind with us here by us supporting Ukraine. So if you get caught doing some janky stuff, you're going to get the book and then some. Hence, here with Tory Lanez, if he is guilty, he can get 22 years. <laughs> But why are we going to say believe all women when we're hearing the story that sounds so messy? Because when you go to court, it's got to be beyond a reasonable doubt. You can't say, I feel he's guilty. We got to look at the evidence. We got to listen to people's testimony. And when we hear what they got to say, it's like, hey, do you think that this man committed this crime or not? Or is it so dusty? Is it so hazy? It's like, I don't feel good about this here. I don't feel good about this tribe. Right? Here's what I'm going to do, guys. I want to play a video of yesterday's update. I'm going to fast forward completely right now. My, this is a lawyer. He's in California. He's been on, so, he's on social media a lot. He's been interviewed on Vlad TV. Uh, I can't pronounce his name, you know, so I, I, I've heard it a couple of times. But I just don't want to get it wrong here, right? Who, man, is like that? And Megan interview was, you know, I know, man. So I want to play his video first, right? His update. Because the reason why I'm going to play this video because this is the updates from yesterday. And as we're recording this on Friday here, guys, this trial is so messy and janky. Today could be possibly the last day of the trial. Today, possibly Monday the latest. Because the curveball between Meg's testimony and Kelsey's testimony. If you guys want to, Kelsey is Meg's former best friend. She was the one actually in the car. In the car, you had four people. The driver, Meg, Tori, and Kelsey. Four people. So what I want to do is I want to play this video here, guys. And I'm going to let this play. I might stop a few times here, but I'm going to let this play here. It's a couple of clips snippet together because the way the court was going on yesterday, they went to recess, and he was giving us updates. So some of these updates were from earlier yesterday, then the afternoon, and then the end of the day. I'm going to let it play through, and then we're going to get it going here. So give me one second, guys. Let me do this here. There we go, guys. I want to I want to give you guys this update here from yesterday because this is what's current right now. Some people are gonna tell you what they feel. There's gonna be some people saying that they still but they're gonna rock with Meg no matter what. There's some people who rock with Tory no matter what. But this is the update from the courthouse yesterday, right? Some of y'all been getting the piece together, but this is the update from yesterday. And then we're gonna we're gonna continue the dialogue here. So here we go, guys. Oh my God. When we walked out of that courtroom just now, every single person was shocked. 
every single person was frozen. A lot of people were looking at me like, bro, tell me what is going on. Kelsey took the stand before she even started talking. There were fireworks. This started with Kelsey coming in and saying she is invoking her Fifth Amendment right to remain silent and not testify. When someone invokes the Fifth Amendment, they have to be invoking it because if they were to testify, they would be giving testimony that incriminates themselves. She said, I will not testify because I would be giving testimony that I'm incriminating myself. That's what it means when she invoked the Fifth Amendment. Now, the government offered her immunity. They said that we will not prosecute you and use this testimony against you, so please testify. Her lawyer came back and said, well, that's not good enough. I don't want you to just not use her testimony against her. I want you to confirm to me that you will not prosecute her for any crimes arising out of this instance, out of this situation. The prosecutors said, yes, on the record, we will not be charging Kelsey for anything that came out of this incident. And then she testified. I'm going to go over the whole testimony in the next video, but here's the piece that we just left off at lunch. The courtroom is just, I can't even explain the tension. They asked her, at one point, did Tori ever say that I'll shoot you? And she said, I'm invoking my Fifth Amendment right, which suggests, they, they asked her, what's the context? When did he say, I'm going to shoot you? She said, I invoke the Fifth, which suggests that the context was Kelsey was doing something. Perhaps Meg was also doing something that would incriminate her. That's the context. That's what I get from it. That's my opinion. That's my read of it. For those of you who have been telling me that I'm biased and that there's only one angle to this story and that a man pulled a gun and shot five times, at another woman and that the prosecutors haven't charged him with attempted murder but i'm biased if you believe the story that a man pulled a gun and shot five times at another woman he hasn't been charged with attempted murder and now you have another woman in the car saying i plead the fifth heard the bombshell from this let me let me pause that here let that marinate for a second guys meg has been on a social media tirade Prior to this here, how many times does she say Tori shot me? What's going on, Jew? How many times prior to this court case, whether she was on stage performing, whether she was twerking body, how to, how to, how to, body, how to, how to, she was on Twitter. She was on IG. She was with her new boy, her current boyfriend, whatever the case may be. What does she keep saying? She keeps saying, Tori shot me. Hey, guys, hold on. I got another thing to add here before I continue the rest of this video here. What else does she say during the testimony that he didn't say here? During Meg's testimony, she said that her back was turned. She did not see Tori pull the trigger, but she was confident that Tori was the shooter. <laughs> And what else happened, guys? She also said that her friend Kelsey did not shoot her. But why would Kelsey need immunity? Why would Kelsey say that she's pleading the fifth? Because. 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 After this trial here, she is worried that anything that she's going to say here, that L.A. County and the district attorney is going to come and come after her. There is actually DNA on from four people on the gun. So now we're creating reasonable doubt, people. You got to convict the man who, if you're going to put it on him 22 years, it has to be beyond a reasonable doubt that this man was guilty. On top of that, too, what did my man say here? That why during all these, during this whole situation here, how come Tory was not accused of attempted murder? That should be on one of the th items here on the docket. That should be one of the charges here. But hold on. He shot at her feet five times. He shot at her. That is attempted murder. How come that ain't happening here? Why does she need immunity? Because maybe Tori didn't shoot the gun. But we supposed to believe all women. Even the woman who was the best friend lied. <laughs> 
everything that she told police in the beginning is opposite to what she said on the stand now. How can we believe all women when the women on this on this particular individual try here as an example is not only lying to law enforcement, but then have to renege on it so that they say they don't go to jail or get charged here. And then we got Meg here. She's going on Gail King to get on the offensive months earlier to build the emotional support to come back on the stand and lie about over half the things that she said leading up to the trial. But well, we're supposed to believe all women. Let's continue, y'all. Let's get back to this video here so you can hear his updates. This morning, let me catch you up on the rest of Kelsey's testimony. They asked her, how are you feeling? She said, I don't want to be here. They asked her, what's triggering you? She said, quote, lies from Megan. She was asked, what lies? That I betrayed her, that I am a bad friend, that I took hush money. She was asked, how do you feel about the allegation that you shot Megan? She said, that's ridiculous. She was asked, how did you meet Tory Lanez, me and Meg both met her him at the same time at a Rock Nation brunch. She continued that after they met, Meg wanted to hook Tory up with Kelsey, that that did happen, that Kelsey and Tory were engaged in an intimate relationship, that Kelsey got COVID, went back to Texas, and during the time she was back in Texas, having left LA, Tory and Meg started getting it on. They talked about the night of the incident. They got to Kylie Jenner's house around three. Wait, before you talk about Kylie Jenner, that's what I was talking about earlier, Tribe. This was burned back in 2020. This was during the time during quarantine radio. This is when Meg went behind Kelsey's back. Got to remember here, Tori and Kelsey were getting on first. If anything, if you, if, if you guys see the court testimony, Meg originally helped Kelsey hook up with Tori. Kelsey and Tori were together first. And then when Kelsey got sick during quarantine, she came in through the back end and was smashing Tori behind her back. And so Tori, now after she got better, Tori was smashing both of them. Megan's dirty, y'all. She will, if you are her best friend, she will smash your man. These are the type of women that women worry about. Megan, that if you got something or whatever it is, she going to take it. Now let's continue. 3 to 4 p.m. She was a great witness, by the way. She answered everything extremely knowledgeably, extremely truthfully. I believe every word she said. She never seemed like she was trying to hide something, except when she pled, except when she pled the fifth, of course. Now, she's clarified, this was not a party. Those are just people hanging out. There was maybe five or six people before Tori got there. There was a lot of alcohol. She said at one point she did pass out when she woke up. Tori was there. They were all in the pool. They were having fun. She confirmed a lot of the speculation. Tori was hooking up or trying to hook up, flirting with Kylie in the pool. Meg was very agitated, trying to leave with Tori. Tori did not want to leave. She contradicted Meg's testimony. Meg said, oh, I don't remember ever leaving once and then coming back. Kelsey testified they all got in the car. They left without Tori. As they were going, Meg is rambling being just weird and then says, oh, I forgot my slipper, let's go back. They all go back to get her slipper. Then they grab Tori, they she, Kelsey didn't go in at that point when they went back, but when they came out, Meg came out with Tori and Meg said to Kelsey, bitch, Kylie told us it's time for us to go. Our Tori drops the bombshell that he had been hooking up with Meg. Kelsey did not know this. The first time she learned this is in that car. That's when the argument ensues. That's when just lots of arguing is going back and forth. The process Let me pause that here, guys. That is a huge part here. That is the what I brought up earlier to kind of set the stage here with the Gail King interview. Meg is going to say, oh, we just trauma bonded. We were just friends. You know what I'm saying? He was a good friend to rely on during that time period, right? then why did this fight happen between all three of y'all in the car before the shooting? Because the bomb got dropped that Tori was going back and forth with both Kelsey and Megan. Tori's just being Tori, y'all. And to, to go back to what he was saying about being at Kylie Jenner's party and Kylie Jenner kicked everybody out, but Megan before that, Meg was pissed off because Tori was flirting with Kylie, y'all. What's going on, Larry? Hey, real fast, little sidebar here for all my short brothers here. If you got a major talent, Tory Lanez, outside the situation here, should be your idol. Hey, Tory Lanez is 5'4", five, 5'5", five, five, man. Megan Thee Stallion's like 6'1", 6'2", with heels on or boots. 
Okay. Tor, I know he's a singer and R&B singers get all the love. The point I'm saying is that who cares about your height? If you got a skill set, y'all, if you got an art form, you got something that the women going to say, we don't care about his height. He just moved with it. You know what I mean? Hey, Tori was getting it on with Kelsey and Kelsey's a cute girl. You seen pictures of Kelsey? She's not, I'm not saying she's fine. I'm not saying she's 10. Hey, Kelsey kind of holding. Kelsey kind of cute. Hey, I personally, I'm not a fan of Megan Thee Stallion, but she got a body out this world and Tori was smashing that looking like she twice his size. <laughs> and he over here during this time period, that pool party was going on. That was when Kylie and uh, Travis, uh, Travis Scott were having problems. She was, she was kind of single during that time. So Tori was just being Tori, you know, guy already got two girls that he already broke off and he was about to smash a Jenner. Tori was at the peak of his powers, y'all. Tori was at the peak of his powers. So I just want to give this quick sidebar for all my short brothers out here. If you got a skill, SW says he sat up and mopped that brow. Yes, he did, man. Carl's like, Tori makes too much me putting in, putting it to, to, to one woman. Facts. Yeah, he's a superstar. Y'all don't real. So a lot of us don't realize how big Tory Lanez was getting to, and his peak was at 2020 before this happened here. He was about to get Kylie. He was going to add a Jenner to his resume. Hey, man, R&B singers get it. It um, look at Prince at five foot two. Prince was getting it. I'm just saying. I'm. I know if you if you you ain't got to be a professional singer. Can you carry a tune? Me 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 me. Me, 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 me. <laughs> Can your ass sing? If you, hey, Tori should be a lesson here. If you got some skills in a mouthpiece and you look halfway decent, you ain't got to be good looking, just look attractive. Like I'm saying, you don't got to be fine to be attractive, right? Because uh, Fantasia ain't the most beautiful woman in the world, but she do got an essence about herself. It's like, yeah, she got a sexiness. She ain't, she ain't good looking, but she got a little something. You know, I, I, she ain't my first choice. <laughs> but I'm just trying to let y'all know for my short brothers here. You got a chance if you got a skill set. Rod was like, Prince was getting it while wearing blouses. Facts, Rod. Facts. But I got I digress. Let me get back here now. Tori's about to get it on with Kylie Jenner, and they all got kicked out here. Now, let's let my man finish off what he's talking about here with this particular part of, of the case here, the testimony. Because what Kelsey is saying what he's reporting right now is the complete opposite of what Meg is saying. And so when we get the trials like this, we get the court cases, people, it's not only beyond a reasonable doubt to as well, we also got to talk about credibility. And when the prosecution brings two witnesses on the stand, one's the material witness who's also the victim in Meg, and the other one's supposed to be your star witness. And when both of them have completely lied, and both of them have said things that then have to refute that because they don't want to be convicted of perjury, and then on top that too, Kelsey reneging what she actually told the police. Half the job is done for court for Tory's lawyers. <laughs> Tory's lawyers, all they got to do is just add the poking extra holes to the prosecution story. And then if you're in the jury, how can you convict Tory Lanes and sit this man in jail for 22 years? When you got these two girls who are clearly two former best friends. And they don't got, they're saying completely opposite things. But here's the thing, though, when we're hearing two separate stories, what story sounds reasonable enough when you're listening? Kelsey's lying, but at least when her story, when she reneged back and forth, what she's telling the stand sounds a little bit more logical than what Meg said on the stage, on the stand here. Let's continue, guys. Prosecutor really tried to pin it down and make it look like the argument was only between Tori and Meg and Kelsey was adamant that nah, everybody was arguing with each other. It was a mess. She confirmed that Meg was dissing Tori's career, his skills as an mm. artist. This stuff all crescendoed. The prosecutors asked her about it. Was Hold on. Sign language, y'all. 
Meg threw that in there. See, Kelsey's talking about something completely different about the arguing, about her finding out about, oh, Meg was smashing Tori too? What the hell? I, Meg, how you gonna take my man again, right? And then Meg gonna tell the story. Yeah, we argued, Tori, because we know, because found out yo, your career ain't that good. Your music ain't that high. You ain't that good of a rapper anyway. And... <laughs> Hey, come on, man. <laughs> Y'all got to stop playing with me on this one here. All right. See, that's why when we talk about please believe all oh, women. No, 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 guys. I'm not saying it to be an anti-woman person. I'm saying that you people, we're people who watch this channel here, guys. We got a few people in our 20s, but most of us are here are in our 30s, 40s, and 50s. We're middle-aged, grown people with jobs, careers, and families. Are you going to believe every single person that comes into your goddamn life? No. What I'm saying is as an adult, we take things on a case-by-case -case standard. Don't just say, oh, this person cried DV here. We got to believe her. No. Here's what, we, what I'm saying here. I feel bad for victims. But we need to hear the other side because if we don't do our due diligence, the person that you're trying to convict here who could be innocent is now also a victim. We got we could have a situation where that we had a victim who caused angst on another person where she creates or he creates another victim. That's what we don't say. We believe all one person says here. No, we sit back and we wait. We let everything unfold. And when we get all the information, then we say, OK, this is what we got here. This is what we got moving. What's going on, PA? Tell you what's going on here. Let's continue, guys. Let's let's play the rest of this video here. Was there ever a threat made by Tori to shoot? She said yes. Prosecutor asked her, what's the context? She said, I invoke my Fifth Amendment right. You can only invoke your fifth if the testimony that you are compelled to give will incriminate you, meaning mm. that the context around the threat, if Meg will not tell us, <laughs> if Kelsey tells us, it would incriminate her. And it gets crazier. We are on a 15 minute break. Got to get back into the courtroom very quickly. I sat at 12 o'clock. Wait, before we get to this next update here. See, this, 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 this video is edited a couple of times here so we can smooth this out so we get straight to the point here, guys. Another point with Kelsey. Why would she request immunity so that she does not get, you know, tried on, on any circumstance with her testimony? You know what I think, guys? And hopefully, we'll, we'll probably get some updates. Might come out now as we're doing this live stream or about somebody get done with this live stream. I think that since everybody was drinking in that car, we're going to hear what he's going to He's going to give an update here. But here's just my synopsis, guys. Everybody was drunk. They admitted to all shots. Right? They all were. Kelsey even admitted that she passed out at the house, but woke up and then she felt a little bit better, but she was still drunk. They admitted that when they were in the car and left and they got kicked out of the party that they were just arguing and rambling over nothing. Here's what I think. That Kelsey and Meg were the ones that were arguing. The backstabbing. You put me my friend. How you gonna smash one of my guys again? Here's Tori now. Before it was Ben Simmons. Before that was the baby. Every guy, every guy that I get with, you gotta smash. Megan, what's your problem? <laughs> then of course, whatever happens to the point where they get out the car, I believe that there was a struggle, a fight for that gun. They're drunk, they're fighting over it. The struggle and the fight leads off to the five bullets going off at Meg's foot, by her foot. Hence why there is DNA of four people on the gun. If you guys don't know about DNA, they're saying that when a gun goes off, the, the gun the, the gunpowder residue can travel as far as eight feet, guys. Yeah. So if you're within a gun that goes off and if you're within the circumference of eight feet, give or take here, you could have that gun residue on you. Four people have is 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 stated to have the their DNA in the gun here. The driver, Kelsey, Tori, and we're missing one person because Meg is not there. So it could have been someone else. I don't know on the scene that we're missing here. There was a struggle on this for this gun here. It goes off here. Meg claims she her back was turned, and then it goes off, and then that's what we got here. Kelsey lies saying Tori did it initially because she ain't trying to go down for it. 
But now that you're on the stand here and things, you know, a lawyer can pick apart your whole story. You're saying that I need immunity because if it's found out the story about both of us fighting for the gun, I can be charged. That's why I need immunity. And that's where we're at right now with the testimony going on as we speak. I know I might be a little bit off here. That sounds like more of the story than we have than what Meg is telling here and the fact that what Kelsey is saying here regarding her right for the Fifth Amendment here before she got the immunity deal. Let's continue now. The clock directly in Kelsey's line of vision. I watched her testify. I watched her deny that Tori threatened to shoot her. I watched oh. her confess that she lied to the police when that? she said that. The reason why she was lying to the police, the investigators, is because she wanted to protect herself. How would you protect OMG. yourself? The rest of the testimony that we just saw in the after lunch session was a process. Wait a minute. I, I know I'm pausing here, but why do you need to protect yourself if you didn't have to do anything? Why are you requesting immunity? Because Kelsey's hand is on that gun. She pulled that trigger back, clap back, bang, bang. Hey, man. Hey. If y'all think Tori did this, y'all need to listen to the evidence, y'all. We just can't be convicting one man because we feel a certain way or you rock because she's your favorite entertainer or you like her music. We can't be just sending men to jail just because. Believe all women. Remember we believed all women of Emmett Till? I know we're, that's a, there's a different situation here, but we, we believe they believe that white woman and that white woman is still living today, knowing that everybody knows that she's goddamn guilty. But we believed all women thin. We believed all women thin here. Are we going to send Tor I'm not even a Tory Lanez fan like that. I'm just saying, are we going to send Tory to jail over this janky testimony here and also this coming out here? Believe all women. Come on now, guys. Come on. Come on, I need beyond a reasonable doubt to see if this man actually committed a crime. What we got here is a couple of drunk nonsense young people in the car on some fuckery. But did the man do anything? Because why would a woman go out of her way to ask for immunity so that anything she says cannot be used and tried against her in a court of law, especially in L.A. County, with all the stuff that we know goes on with L.A. and the district attorney and this is the whole city in general with the LAPD? Come on, man. No one goes out of their way to go ask for immunity unless you think that you might be guilty of something. Believe all women, right? No one, no one talks about that aspect. People look at the racial aspect of Emmett Till. Guys, people look at the racial aspect of Emmett Till because it was racially motivated. What happened? Whistling out a white woman. But what happened, though? The initial issue was believing a woman. That woman still alive to this day here. She is sick and elderly, and I don't care how sick she is. Her ass should be in a goddamn jail cell right now. Lock her ass up. But nah, she get to walk free here. The situation, do, are you, I mean, you don't got to be a Tory Lanez fan, guys, but do you think that he did this here? Beyond a reasonable doubt. Prosecutor holding on for dear life to a recording between her a police investigator and another L.A. County prosecutor and Kelsey and just replaying that recording and saying, Kelsey, didn't you say this? And Kelsey saying, I did. Kelsey, is that true? And Kelsey saying, no, I lied. Did the L.A. County prosecutors give Kelsey immunity? I think so. They did, didn't they? That's what I reported this morning. That's what I saw in this courtroom. Does Kelsey sound like a believable witness? No. <laughs> Is Tory Lanez accusing her of being the shooter? Yes. I'll tell you something. That jury, most of them, it looked like they had their mind made up. I don't know which way, but they saw that person say that I lied about all that to protect myself. They're going to hear that there was gunshot residue on her. Are done. Kelsey is not done. She will be back tomorrow for another day of testimony. In fact, the opening 
direct examination by the prosecution of Kelsey started in the morning. It's still not finished. It's going to continue to tomorrow, and then we'll get cross-examination. Let me catch you up on what happened. Kelsey testified that everything that she had told prosecutors and investigators before, suggesting that Tori had shot at Meg, was a lie, that she did it. Why? To protect herself. Why was she protecting herself? She didn't want to incriminate herself. And then there was this back and forth exchange that just kept going on. They were saying the same thing to each other. I don't know why the judge allowed it. The prosecutor's like, why? She's like, to protect myself. Why? To protect yourself from what? And she just kept saying, to protect myself. Finally, they moved on. The prosecutor's story basically comes down to this. They're introducing evidence that Kelsey seems to deny, but then doesn't seem to deny as far as Tory making offers to say, hey, I'll give you this money when they're in the car and the police are coming up behind them and there's a helicopter overhead. Tori's like, yeah, I'll give you a million dollars. Don't say anything. And she's like, I didn't take that. I didn't know what he was talking about. And then there's another meeting that happens later on between Tori and her. And she sort of, she says, I didn't take any money. But she at the same time doesn't deny that offers were made. The other part that prosecutors are using and hanging their hat on are messages after the shooting where uh, Kelsey is communicating with other people, including a key text message where Kelsey says, Tori shot Meg. That was sent to Meg's security guard. For the cross-examination, what I'm looking and expecting for the defense to do is basically pin Kelsey at the shooter. They're going to start with the gunshot residue. They're going to say she's got gunshot residue on her. And then they're going to start pointing out to all, and there are so many, I don't even think you can cover them all, of the inconsistencies in the stories between Meg and Kelsey. One of the biggest inconsistencies that I can't make any sense of is Meg says that she was out of the car alone. Kelsey says, no, we were both out of the car. She said that today at court. We were both out of the car when the shots happened. Kelsey vehemently did. That is another part that I want to hang my head on here. Megan was so adamant about being the only person out of the car. Kelsey saying, no, they both were out of the car. Like I'm saying, every aspect of Meg's testimony is the opposite of Kelsey's here. You're saying one thing here. She's saying another. They're both on the prosecuting side. It'd be one thing if Kelsey was on the defense side and you're having these witnesses come back like that. No, these is coming from the prosecution side. And we still have not even got to the point of to the defense part here of calling their own witnesses. If Tori's going to take the stand, which I don't think he's going to take the stand. If, I, if I'm the lawyers, I don't think he needs to take the stand right now with all that's going on here. You need to poke holes on what the, the, the prosecution is doing right now. And so you take it to the jury saying you can't base it on reasonable doubt here. Continue. They denied that she saw the sh any type of shooting and she kind of kept saying that there were just gunshots that went off. She did not admit <laughs> how. I think a juror is going to go one of two ways. A juror is going to look at this and say she's been paid off. She's lying for Tory. Tory is a criminal mastermind guilty. I think a juror might look at it and say she's trying to protect herself from incriminating herself about being involved in this shooting. And so she's lying and maybe she's the shooter. And that's enough for me to say reasonable doubt. The prosecution hasn't met their burden. We shall see. This case is not ending anytime soon. Stay tuned. That's the end of his update. See, I haven't heard any updates today yet. Right. I know that there's stuff just dropping probably right now as we speak. I haven't got a chance to because I'm doing the show right now. Rise like prosecutors didn't do their jobs. They were just decided to book another brother. It was shoddy to begin with. Rod, I was asked anybody here if you this is just any situation here. If you got a case where that there was somebody who was shot at. Not saying point blank range, but the distance. Why is not the L.A. prosecutors putting on a charge of attempted murder on Tory here? Any situation that we've seen in the past or situation like this here, there would be an attempted murder charge on here. No, we don't have that. The prosecutors knew this was a shoddy thing to begin with. What's going on, Tony? So there's a lot that's going to go on. I'm kind of curious what the update's going to be today. I know I'll be able to get that once I'm done with this show here today. This show's not over, guys. If anybody's wondering, 
since I'm done with that video, this show is not done yet. I got multiple. This is a variety show today. We got multiple items we're covering here right now. The first subject is Megan Thee Stallion. We're going to do a reaction video after the fact here. So if you guys are wondering, just stick around. I got time today here, guys. This is going to be two, three hours at least today. All right. So just if y'all wondering here, I just want to cover Meg first here because this was this has been the hot story this week. This is what's been going on. And I just want to put my two sits on here and just weigh in on it, basically, because it's just it's just crazy what's going on here, because the whole premise that I was talking to a few people, I was like, it doesn't matter. We should believe a woman regardless here. But this is what we got here at the end of 2022 in December here at this case going on here. How you look at it or not right now, Megan Thee Stallion is the end of the year's version of Amber Heard. Remember the top of the early this year? We had the Amber Heard Johnny Depp trial. No one believed Johnny Depp. Remember? Johnny Depp's weird anyway. Pirates of the Caribbean, making hundreds of millions of dollars. Great actor, but we can't hold that against him. Great actor, but everybody knows he's weird. People talk about how he, the way he moves on set, some of the things you know that he says, you know, even the clothing. When he's, you know he started, we start making big time bucks. How his his clothing game changed. We know my man, you know, is a little weird out there. Even people in the Hollywood game be like, yo, man, Johnny Depp out there a little bit, right? But what happened with this Amber Heard situation? Her top of the year, everybody believed Amber, his ex wife. Remember, they were married. They were married. They were already divorced. And all the accusations that she put on that man. And we all believed her. Until the court case came. Till the trial came. Till Johnny Depp spent millions of dollars and hired top lawyers to get all the evidence out there. Audio, video, elevator cameras and stuff in the hotel and the buildings that they live at here. He had to spend millions of dollars to clear his name. Why? Because we believe all women. We believe all women. And what happened when that trial occurred, all the evidence was in place, everybody who was subpoenaed to talk on, and you know what we found out? We found out that Johnny was the goddamn victim. And what we also found out is that Amber Heard is a piece of goddamn work. What was a few lies that she told? Remember, she said that she blamed Johnny on the fact that she was written out of Aquaman, the Aquaman sequel. They had the, the guy, one of the heads of Marvel and Disney on the stand saying they had wrote her out prior to that decision being made. She, But she had all of the public believing that, oh, because of Johnny, she ain't in Aquaman no more. She's missing out on that bag. This is a big time movie. This is DC, you know what I'm saying? The big DC and Marvel rivalries here. And when you get yourself a big comic book movie and Johnny to fall, no, 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 no. They said, nah, we just weren't feeling her anyway. We, the, script was, the script was done before we knew about this case here, before you subpoenaed me. Who y'all, Dave? I didn't. We talking about Pooh Man? Oh, you got you, you got to rephrase what you're saying here, Pooh Man. Who y'all, Dave? I didn't. <laughs> I'm just saying. But we saw what happened with Amber Heard. She lied about being beat up, and then the same day they had investigators take pictures. The same day, say, like, how your ass get beat up when you walking and smiles down the LA streets here without a bruise or mark on your body? You know, you said you got great. You know, with bottles and stuff like that came to be not true. So we're now we're closing out the year 2022 right now. I hate to say like I hate to put it like this, but that was like the white manosphere version. You know, we see Johnny Depp in that situation here. Now we got the black version of it here with Megan Thee Stallion and Tory Lanez here. And what happened? We had said, oh, believe all women. Believe all the situation here. And what we got here, we got a cluster fuck of a court situation here that we thought this was going to be on longer. Now we're from the ground reports that this thing could be done as, as late as Monday. And then they can have a con they can have all the conclusions done by next week. One thing we know for a way this is moving right now, this is gonna be done before Christmas, guys. This is gonna be done before Christmas. And here's the thing that I want to bring to the tribe: if Tory Lanes is found not guilty, 
And he, because of all the reasonable doubt that has occurred between Kelsey being the possible shooter, we're going to get some updates today. I might have, depending on what happens today, I might have to do a live stream to get those updates. But if Tory is innocent, if Tory was not the one shooting the gun at Meg's foot, should Tory sue Meg? Should Tori sue Meg? Meg was already a big time entertainer when that happened, but this situation here catapulted her to superstardom because she was out in front of a major situation with another celebrity and she was the victim. And then by being the victim, she got the emotional support that comes around a situation like this. And now she's bigger than ever. Without Look at her music sale. Like, I, I want to point this picture out to you guys. If you look at her music sales, her streaming numbers since it's happened here, and you look at the status that she is, it doesn't add up. She streams a lot of music, but she doesn't stream the music that coincides with being a superstar. Right? This situation catapulted her career to the next level. Katori Sue saying that my career took an L while your career went to the stratosphere. I'm suing because you gained and I lost. Or should Tori just walk away saying, I got my freedom. Let's just let this be done with to keep it moving, guys. I'm going to get to my next subject here in a second, but this is how we're going to end off this here for this one for today here. Should Tori sue? If, if he is found innocent, let this case over next week. They find him not guilty. Be like, you know what? I want a piece of Meg's check. Her stardom is out of, out of the stars here right now because of the situation here. You think that she probably has a Popeye's commercial with this popping off here? You think she's on major national brands with all the marketing and the makeup stuff? I mean, she there's a, there's a good case that she could have got there. I'm just saying, though, this situation happened and boom, skyrocket. Or does Tori say, you know what? I'm a man. And I know men get the short end of the stick and there's going to be people who don't believe me and they're going to feel that in this situation, I still should have protected a black woman. And they're going to say that I'm being an opportunist and maybe I should just get out with the getting is good and get all my life and my career. Because some people are going to say, hey, Tori. You're, you're going to keep this in the headlines even longer. Women are going to hate you even more. So why don't you just walk away and you are you won, just walk away and rebuild your career? Or does he say, run me my bag? <laughs> Megan got the bag out of this here, so I should be compensated. You got to get both sides of the coin here, guys, because by him being an entertainer, by him being up, he was on the trajectory of being a superstar. You're going to, you got to understand how some people are going to look at this if he actually sues her, right? I'm not saying that that's not how I look at it. I'm saying that these are the consensus of what people are saying already if he makes the attempt to sue. Red Pill is like, ain't no walking away after you tried to ruin my life. I hear that, Red Pill. Rod's like, I was suing civil court and break her. That's what we're talking about, Rod, civil court. We're Because... Because of all the, the accusations, right? Because she clearly said, Tori shot me. She said that on social media. She said that in interviews. But then when she gets on the stand, she said that her back was turned. She didn't say she saw him pull the trigger, but she knew it was him that shot her. It's like that Biggie song. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Who shot you? <laughs> Dude, Bear's like, he got to sue. Kirby's like, get the bag. Jay's like, he he ain't, he's not going to Rodney King this. Can't we all get along? Hell no. Nah. Yo, go get back, bro. I hear you. What's going on, Roger? What's popping? Rod's saying, people are already saying bad stuff about him anyway. So what's a few more people hating him going to do? Good point, Rod. Let me put this on the screen here. Good point, Rod. That's a good point. Because even with all this evidence here, 
There's people still, when I say people, there is still women here who still believe right now at this exact moment, not being indifferent, not going down the line saying, okay, we heard Meg lie. We heard Kelsey lie. We still got away from the defense. Even after all this, they're saying he's still guilty, girl. You're right, Rod. All this is going on here right now. And instead of saying, I'm going to go move to the middle and wait for the defense, we still got what we say, he guilty. Mark says he has to sue because this will forever be over his head because some will never believe him. I hear that. Yes, a lot of women hate Tory Lanez. Yeah, because so many women love Megan. No, why, Jay? You know why, Red Pill? You know why, Kirby? Because Megan has allowed, Megan is one of the female entertainers in today's current game, day and age right now is allowing women to let their inner 304 out. Right? Remember when the baby dropped his album about a month or two ago and he was like, yo, I smashed Meg the night before this went down. Meg did the night. What she do? She went on a concert and said, it's my body, my choice. I can sleep with whoever I want to sleep with. Yeah. Women love her because Megan, they are allowed to live through Megan if they can't already. She, she allow, Megan allows women to let their inner hoe out. Women love Meg because of her twerking and the whop of Cardi. And also, the irony is, though, is that Cardi moves the way she do, but behind closed doors, she don't live that life. She married. Her kids don't listen to her music. She cooks and cleans. You know what I'm saying? She well, How she lives her public life as an entertainer is the 180 of what she does because she don't want her kids and her daughter seeing that ish here, right? And she got caught on social media with, with, with the bold face lie like that. Like, oh, I can't play it. My daughter's coming around. You know? Make status allows women to say, see, I can be a hoe and it's okay. You can't judge me. Meg's a superstar. And a Meg's a superstar who can get brand deals, can get commercials and sponsorships and have hit records and go on tour. Who is any man to tell me differently? <laughs> Megan allows women to feel how they want to feel, to move how they want to move, whether it's right or wrong and what we're seeing so much wrong. And here's something that we, I don't know if you guys have seen just leading up to this point here. Megan ain't got many friends in the game, men or women. This is not the first time that Meg's been caught lying. This ain't the first time that Meg's been moving unscrupulously. So many other entertainers and artists have unfollowed her on Twitter, on IG, whatever the case may be, or don't have any dealings with her because of the things that she's done behind the scenes. There is so, I don't got time to go into this is This is not a pop culture center that I'm doing here. I just know what I watch and what I see. And if you guys do your homework and just go on YouTube and go on, on Google or go on IG and Twitter, and then you can go on a litany list of entertainers, men and women, over the last two years that say, when you get to unfollow means I don't fuck with you. Especially if you've been following them and you made money together. We're seeing a situation where that slowly but surely we're seeing Meg's past coming back here because so many people have said, nah, I don't want to deal with this here. She dirty. She messy, stuff like that here. But no one talks about it because she's a superstar on the Ascension up here and Rock Nation is making so much money off of her that they don't care about the other stuff as long as the bag keeps coming in because she is their investment. And because she's their investment, Rock Nation is pushing that. And with Rock Nation pushing that, so many women are loving and look to her as an icon, as an idol, as a role model. Look at her. She's getting to the bag. She's getting into the money. She can get with any guy that she wants, and no one's judging her. For right now, they said that moment when they're not judging her. But you know what, though? Credibility. You're going to need that eventually, you guys. You can't be lying, conniving, you know, sleeping around with everybody in the industry, things of that nature. I get it. You want to be liberal of your stuff like that. But there's going to come a point in time in your life where if you're moving the way you're moving, it's going to come back the way to haunt you and bite you in the ass if you're not moving right. Know what I'm saying? 
women love Megan. And that's why no matter the evidence, they're rocking with her. But I'm kind of curious what happens after this trial here. As we close out this part of the show here, if Tori is not guilty, how many people are going to still ride with Megan saying, it doesn't matter, Tori should have protected her? Or, I don't care if she lied. Women are the ab subject to abuse of domestic violence or DV all the time. So because of these items here, it doesn't matter. I still rock with her because men still, women still have these problems every day. That's what I'm hearing right now. Instead of holding her accountable. Right? Jargon says, as always, is it as always? It's about feelings and not about reality. Facts. SW says, Rock Nation's golden hen. Yeah. She making a lot of money for Rock Nation. They And here's the thing, too. Rock Nation has invested in a lot into her. So you know they had a reason for wanting this case to go away. It does. But what can you do when the victim is a liar? So when we know the victim is a liar, how can we believe all women? You can't. You got to take it on a case by case measure. If you say believe all women, then you know what I want you guys to say forward here? Believe all men then. And you say you can't do that. You know why? Because everybody lies. So stop the believe all women. And how about we take it by the situation? Take it by the circumstances. Because you go ahead and assume that she is in the right. And you know what they say about the word assume. You make out an ass out of you and me. So many people are riding with Megan right now. But at the end of the day, what we got going on right now, if I... <laughs> If I was a Megan Thee Stallion super fan, I would be very, very butthurt right now. Be like, I thought you were better than this. <laughs> oh, man. Check it out, man. We got my man Thomas is back with another cash app, man. He come with the one ninety nine. I just got to upgrade you to the $2 holler here. He says for both women should be in jail for perjury. Hey, Thomas, man, I appreciate the cash app, man. First things first, salute. I appreciate you, brother. Hey, one thing I got to correct you on. There is no perjury right now, right? Perjury is when you lie on the stand on the court case of the questions being asked. What happened, though, is that Megan and Kelsey lied beforehand. Kelsey lied to the police and lied in text messages and Megan lied to being on, on social media and to Gail King. But once they got on the stand, they said something differently. Now, it'll be perjury if it comes out that what they're saying on the stand is not correct. But just to let you know, Thomas, it's not perjury unless they lied on the stand. And one thing we know is that they lied before getting on the stand. And now they're telling the truth. So it's not perjury. Just want to make sure we get that out here. You know what I'm saying? But I appreciate the dude the holler, though, brother. I appreciate the holler. But it, we, if there's any perjury, we'll find out later. Whatever happened on the stand this week and if they lied, we will know about that, and we will get to that, guys. No doubt. Okay, guys. Uh, we did a, we did over about close to an hour and a half here on Megan Thee Stallion, on Tory Lanez, on Kelsey. Get the likes up. We're still in the building here. I got I got another item to go about here. Hey, man, y'all ready for, for a reaction video, man? Hey, before we move on here, we got Sheila who came in with the $5 cash app. Hey, Sheila ain't got no questions or comments. She just dropped the straight love. <laughs> hey, Sheila. Salute. Thank you. I appreciate the holler, girl. Thank you very much. Unlike other content creators who don't show love to their peoples, I do. Thank you, Sheila. Sheila's a day one, still rocking hard and rocking strong here as we going on this Friday evening here. It is snowing in Chicago. I'm drinking my Moed. We're talking about Meg the Stallion. But you know what, though? We done with Meg right now. 
I know we done with Meg right now. That was a serious stuff. The serious story. That's been the thing that's been leading up all the news lately. It's been killing YouTube, social media. You'd be on Twitter. You're seeing the updates. You got it there. Now we're going to go to something different here, but we're still in the same specter. We're still in the same space. Is six figures enough, guys? Hold on. Oh, hold on, 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 hold on. Likes up, guys. If y'all walk in the building and y'all moonlighting, if y'all ninja watching, you don't comment, you're not live streaming, you're just watching in the background, that's cool. But you got to press the like button. Are, are you ninja watching? Are you in the background? Are you chilling, minding your business? It's snowing in Chicago, guys. I got another video. We this, this is the this, Now we're we going to get into the funny now. Now, for everybody that was chilling, listen to my little monologue here regarding Megan Stallion and Tory Lanez now. Now I need y'all engagement. I need y'all to wake up. I need y'all to get y'all, y'all, y'all gangster fingers going here. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all keyboard warriors going here. Cause we really about to get into this video, guys. We got a woman that caught in the Kendra show. Oh, yeah. We're back to Kendra again. We are back to Kendra. Let me get some more of this Moet, y'all. I haven't had a sip in a minute. Mm. PA's like, can't chat too much. I'm writing some .NET code. I hear you, PA. Get to work, brother. Get to work. I get it, man. That's why I couldn't lash him yesterday, PA. I wanted to lash him yesterday, but you know what, though? I got to let y'all know they made, they made the promotion official at work. Before we get started with the video. <laughs> That's what I'm drinking today. This is like my little celebrate. This is my celebrate drink here. You know what I'm saying? The, the official notice, like, of course, you know, behind the scenes, they talk to you about it. You get your paperwork. You know, you see a title change. You see a monetary change. Ain't going to tell you no details on it. You know, that's, that's for me, myself, and I, y'all. I don't want y'all knowing. I want y'all pocket watching me. You know what I mean? But before I get to the video, you know, it's like, yo. They, 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 after the back end stuff, and you know, they tell me the date and everything, you know, and we sign off on it. I'm like, you know, I need to, damn, you can talk about it now. I'm like, uh, uh, yeah, I, I'll talk about it later. It's no biggie, you know. But then they sent the email out, you know, end of the year, people who got promotions and, you know, recognitions and little stuff like that. And I, I gotta let y'all know, I gotta do, I gotta update my profile picture at work. <laughs> I gotta update my profile picture. Hey, it's the same picture with before I had my hair locked. Hey, I had I had a Caesar <laughs> or a taper. Hey man, I, I hey I, I was looking like David Banner. <laughs> hey, hey, I ain't gonna lie. If y'all see the picture of me in my shot, I look like Dave, look look like a skin tone lighter than David Banner, y'all. Hey man, stop playing with me. I need to take another picture. But they made it official. Email went out. You see my janky mug shot. <laughs> and everybody showing me some love and appreciation. Like I'm getting emails, you know, I'm, I'm getting text messages like, Dave, long time coming. Congratulations. You deserve it. Right. But you know what that comes with? Comes with more work and more goddamn responsibility. So you know what happened? <laughs> it, I was working to like seven o'clock last night. I was like, Damn. I wanted to live stream so bad. I had other content I wanted to do, but you would know some. If, if you got a job and they're going to pay you, you got a responsibility. Got to give them a hard day's work. You got to give them what they paying you. <laughs> David Banner with dress. Not anymore. Like if you saw the hair, I look like David Banner quick. Not now. I don't look like no David Banner. <laughs> so that's why I couldn't live stream yesterday. Thanks, Derek. I appreciate the congratulations. Red pill like they profile pick looking shell. <laughs> I look different. I, I was 40 pounds heavier too. Hey, no, none of the hair. Add another 40 pounds. You know, no grays. The beard, you know, but there was no grays. I was like, man, I need to upgrade this profile pick, y'all. Uh, and y'all gotta stop playing with me here. They, they oh man. But yeah, it, it felt good, but hey, I had to work. So ain't working today. Day off again. We're off today. I'm off on Monday. Nice little four day weekend, guys. And we're about to get back to Kendra now. Oh, hold on. I need a refill. <laughs> refill. 
Oh, yeah. You can tell. You can tell I'm feeling good today. We snowed in right now. I can't do nothing but talk to y'all and, and work on this channel here and things of that nature. You know, I'm trying to I, I'm not trying to be a team of one no more. I'm actually interviewing one person right now before this show actually started here. Some back end work that I got to do here. Hopefully this person may come through. I can't be a personal one no more. If I want to get this channel the way I want to, I want to produce videos to where it needs to be done. I, I need to hire some back end editors, you know, some videographers, stuff like that to get this thing going even better here, man. Mark's like a great dress come great responsibility. I like that, Mark. So yeah, I was interviewing an editor earlier today. So, you know, we, we, I, I can't be a team of one no more. The the promotion alone tells me I'm gonna have a hard time just trying to just trying to go live to put out any content, let alone trying to learn. I'm trying to learn editing and doing short form videos so I can get the cleanup and jump cuts and stuff like that. So yeah, we're interviewing right now. So guys, the supers that you send me, the cash app that you sent me is not going on notice because now this is going to the payroll. <laughs> Your boy's got to have a payroll now. I got to hire an editor right now. So we'll see how this person works out here. You know, after this show, I got to talk to this person a little bit more here. So, you know, we can see if, if their editing style works with what I'm looking for here. Because the thing about with an editor, it's got to work. It's got to be a relationship. They got to have the same vision and the same style that you're looking for and be able to execute. And at the same time, you know, people got different varying prices, things of that nature. I'm not trying to go by the video. I'm trying to go by the boat. I'm like, yo. I need you to go ahead and give me a, a set price for the month because I'm going to be your number one, your number one customer. You got people coming in here and there. I, I'm going to need you every goddamn week, you know, so we'll figure this out here, guys. We'll figure this out, you know, so hold on. Oh, boy. Y'all have no idea, man. That Moet is so good. And after I get done with this live stream, got to get to this reaction video, guys. Man, shout out to HelloFresh. I, I, I don't get paid by them, but, man, they got some good-ass food with their recipes. I get it delivered every single week. And before I got, I came on the stream here, man, I, man, I made the best steak I ever made in my entire life, guys. I made the best steak ever. I, I made some homemade mashed potatoes. Straight, I, hey, I smashed them. I had, hey, man, sour cream and chive mashed potatoes from scratch, baby. Not no mixed powder that you see in the bag at, you know, the grocery store, Jewel. You open it up, you pour it in the thing, you add some milk and water and stir, you know, a little butter. and Nah, we talking about actual potatoes. I made them homemade, y'all. Oh, man, I had steak, asparagus, and mashed potatoes. It's mashed potatoes I made for my lunch today. Stop playing with me. Shout out to HelloFresh. Man. Because there'll be so many times I'm trying to figure out what I want to eat. They give you the recipes, man. They give you everything you need to get the recipes. I have stuff here that I can modify it so I can make more of it. It's, it's on point, guys. I love it, man. I need it. I need it. I'm not, they're not sponsoring me. I'm just saying I love they I I, I hey, I, I'm not canceling no time soon. I post up a delivery that should be here any moment now. So I can go ahead and restock my fridge and get ready for the next week. Okay, guys. Long stroke y'all enough here. I had to decompress from the, the Meg story. Meg the Stallion, Tory Lanez. I had to decompress for a second. So check it out, guys. If y'all ready for the reaction video, press a one if y'all ready for the video. Press two if y'all want me to long stroke a little bit more here and just talk to y'all for a second here. We're, we're already at hour 45 into the long, live stream here. So if y'all ready for it, we can get it going. Or I can just talk to y'all for a few more minutes about my Hello Fresh experience. <laughs> Roy's like, TND Productions, roll the credits. Host, Dave Editor. <laughs> I hear you, man. Now, I got to hire somebody, Roy. I got to. If I want to get to the next level, if I want this channel to be popping the way it's supposed to be popping, if I want you guys to appreciate the content I'm putting out here, I, 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 got, I, I can't be a team of one no more. I got to spend the money that y'all are giving me here. You know what I mean? The money that y'all are giving me, I got to reinvest it. And if that means hiring another person so that this quality looks a little bit better, that's what it be. That's what it be, y'all. Let's see. Oh, man, the ones are coming out here, y'all. The ones are coming out. Check it out. Yo, we got Sheila, Roy. Derek wants me to long stroke a little bit more pause. Asriel is like, nah, let's get to it. Jergen one. Hey, do better with the two. You trying to chill. Kareem, Kirby, Emmanuel with the one. Quick's like, buy strippers. <laughs> What's going on, Vince? Salute. What's popping, man? What's going on? 
<clears throat> okay. The ones are coming in. I think we're about to get to the video, guys. Y'all ready for the video? I got time today. Like I said, I got time today. Okay. We're going to get to the video. Looks like we're going to react. 69 in the chat. Yeah, it's a nice little homely squad here. You know, notifications didn't go out today. You know, it's all good. Uh, Roger, want me to long stroke a little bit more? It's all good. Let's get these likes up, guys. Hold on here. Let's do this. Okay. RIP Twitch. Yeah, man. That was sad, man, Roy. The way my man did it, did what he did, man. Never know the hurt people are going through, man. You think people are doing well in their lives, successful on TV or on the internet, making money, dressing good, got a family. You never know what's going on up here, man. You never know what's going on up here. Gotta check on your peoples. Hey, Twitch is a reminder that even the people who you think is the strongest in your circle, say just check on them and be like, hey, man, you good? Like, even the people you think that is doing good. But here's the thing. If everybody thinks they're doing good, no one's going to ask if they're doing good because people assume that they're doing good. Even people who are doing great, that's on the outside. You know that person dealing with on the inside. Say, hey, man, how you doing? Thinking about you, man. Hope all is well. You want to know something? I did that recently. Early in the year, this is one guy I went to school with. His name is Phil. I'm not going to say his last name. His name is Phil. Nothing wrong with him. He didn't do anything bad, right? I've known Phil since he's a brother, too, named Phil. Phil B. And I've known him since elementary school. I can't remember exactly if we go back to at least third grade or fourth grade. But we go back that far, right? And my man is doing good things now, right? He's in the military. You know, I think he was in the Navy. And then, you know, I, I remember I saw him when he came back to town. He got married. I just went to holler at him. And now he lives in the West Coast now. And, you know, I see him, you know, doing his production and stuff like that. And he's doing big things, right? And I was like, I, every time I see something on social media, everybody's like, yo, man, good stuff, blah, 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 right? So I didn't want my stuff to be public. I sent him a direct message. And was just like, yo, man, I, yo, we've known each other for over 30 plus years, right? Went to school together. And I'm like, yo, man, I see you doing your thing, man. So I hope you're doing good. And I, yo, keep doing your thing, man. Keep pushing. I'm just hoping that everything's good with you and your peoples. It's like, thanks, bro. We was actually in Vegas together and maybe we didn't get a chance to meet up. But I'm just using that example that even the people that, that you think is doing great, just check in on them. Just say, hey, man, you all right? I know you're doing good professionally, but you're doing good. You're doing all right. It ain't going to hurt, man. You never know. If they say cool, cool. If they open up, then you never know. You could have you, you helped somebody out, y'all. No doubt. Dave, have you watched? Have you seen Shaquille O'Neal documentary, HBO Max? Derek. Okay, we, we got to get to the video in a second. I, I'll answer Derek's question. Yes. God dang, it's good. I haven't seen the last episode yet. I got that in the DVR. I haven't watched the last episode yet. Or the last one that came out this week. Was it Wednesday night? Man, that episode three. Oh, my God, Derek. That was good. Like, even the, the production, the direction, the acting, the storyline, that's stuff was bad. Shout out to Hollywood Shuffle. You know where I got that from. But there was one moment in part three of the documentary where that when Shaq and Ari, like Rick Fox, were talking when they were going over that hump with the Blazers and the background music, the documentary they, they used for it, it set the tone. like It put you into a mood. I had to rewind that part back. If you guys saw how the visual editing was, the music, the way the music came, you can feel like the, you know, you felt like you was back in 2000 when that, when that season, when that series was going on. Like you felt the emotions. It, that that's a good directed documentary. I can't wait to watch part four. I'm watching that tonight, Derek. Yeah, it's good, brother. It's good. It is good. Why the wife has not been questioned? They talked to her. 
Tony. They talked to her, Tony. She said, and she's been on the record. She's going to call the police, Tony. You're talking about Twitch. Because he left his car at the crib. All of a sudden, he bounced, took a few things and left. And said, that's not like him. He never leaves about his car. Don't call them like that. He checked into a motel not too far away, basically. But she was the one that called the police, Tony. They don't got to question her because she's been talking to the police the whole time, man. She's the one that called the police like, yo, he left and his car is still here. And he ain't responding back to text messages. This ain't like him. So she's the one to reach out to the police, Tony. Roy Jones like, help. What are you talking about? Derek like, I got help and one, Dave. I'll tell you about it, Dave. Okay. Cool. She was like, I resigned up for therapy. That's what's up, Sheila. Big purchase often done impulsively, just chill in the middle, Dave. I hear you, Vince. And then that's Ellen's third employee, that so-called committed deletion. Don't believe the hype. Google it. Hey, it could be. I'm not believing the hype. People are sick out here these, these days, guys. I'm not assuming anything because he ain't here, guys. That's what we got to stop doing here because I deal with that, too. I deal with heavy anxiety. I, I've dealt with those thoughts. So I don't want you guys to start doing that stuff, right? I've been there as a black man because if I, at that point where that I was having those anxiety issues, you've been on outside looking at it's like, yo, what's up with Dave? You would think like he's a successful guy. He had a good career. What's going on here? Don't do that, guys. Don't do that. We got to wait for all the details to come out. I understand that could be the third person on Ellen's show, but mental health is a serious thing. Don't do that, guys. Don't do that because the wife did call the police out of suspicion that he was doing things out of character. You know what I mean? So, Hey, we got to wait for everything to come out. We do get anything, guys. So don't do that. What's going on, Broken Traditions? What's popping off, man? I see, brother. I never heard of that Twitch guy, RP. 42 Young, right, Theo? Ellen's DJ, yeah. Okay, guys. I got Thor off guard there. Let's get to the video now. Okay, we about to be two hours into the stream here, and we get into another topic here, guys. I got time today. I told you I got time. How y'all doing out here, yo? We about to get into it, guys. Broken Tree is like, thank you. Don't speculate on mental health. Thank you, Broken. Like, I, you no. Know, before I get to the before I get to this video, who's this here calling me? Nah, you got to go to voicemail. Sorry. Yeah, don't speculate on that. Yeah, just because y'all got to remember too, the man's in entertainment. The man lives in Hollywood. Lives in entertainment. You have no idea what he's probably dealing with behind the scenes, guys. I'm saying that with someone who deals with mental health. So if y'all rock with me here, don't do that shit. I'm cool with y'all. I'm saying don't take it the wrong way, but don't do that shit. Because if, some, if something would have happened where I would have done something, y'all could have made the same speculations about me. Literally about four years ago. No doubt. You know what I mean? Just one, I'm, I'm being real about that. You know what I'm saying? He did some things to himself. And here's the one thing when we talk about mental health. Men will do it over a woman. When a man feels that there's no way out, he going to go ahead and do the damn thing, unfortunately. Why he did it? Unless we get more information, don't speculate. I have my thoughts on it. The Ellen show was ending. Here's my thoughts on it. I'm not speculating, but just from, no, I can't say I'm speculating. I'm just looking at the fact that the show was ending. There could have been other things going on in his life. And there were some things that was going undiagnosed. And he felt that there was no way out. Or he felt that that was the only answer. That's the way I look at certain scenarios. But I'm not going to go out of the way and say that, you know, because just the third person on Ellen's show, you got to check into this. I mean, possibly, but black men and mental health, we don't want to go to a doctor. That's what I'm saying. We don't like going to a doctor, y'all. As black folks, we are scared to go see a specialist. It could be something for the common code, and y'all could have full covered insurance. And I know a bunch of guys who ain't seen a doctor in five goddamn years. <laughs> You know, but when a man does something like that, he feels that this, this is the way to go. So I'm just hoping that there is something behind the scenes that we can get a little bit better understanding. But I just say that if you guys feel trapped where you think that's the only answer, there's help, guys. There is help. If you feel this is the only way, there is another way. You can reach out to somebody. 
Hey, shout out to George Jones, man, with the $20 holla here. Just caught your live, dropping some love. Oh, George coming through. My man coming with the orange. God damn. Hey, brother George. Salud. Thank you for the holla. I appreciate it. Unlike other content creators who don't, man. Thank you for showing your boys some love. We about two hours into this live stream here. We about to do it now. Now we about to get to some shenanigans. Broken July. Hollywood is another animal. Trust me. I've seen some things out there. Same here, broken. Same here, broken. They say, hold on here. They say he lost a lot of money in Bitcoin investment. Uh, hey, that's what's, hey, what's going on, Azrael? A lot of people lost money in Bitcoin. I got out before I lost a lot of money. Hey, I am, who the hell is this calling here? Somebody's calling me. Did they leave a voicemail? Hold on, guys. Nope, they didn't leave a voicemail. Here's, uh, I'm going to tell you guys one thing. If y'all know me personally, and I don't answer the phone, and it's important, leave me a voicemail. Because I'm doing a show right now, and if you don't leave a voicemail, I don't think it's important. Yeah. He's like, I'm not going to lie. I was thinking about doing that over this wretched. Glad I come to my senses. Hey, I hear you, PA. You ain't, hey, don't do that, man. I, I, either to the none, don't do that. I know. I'm glad you came to your senses, PA. Women don't realize the stuff that men go through. We get older and we understand now, but there are certain situations where that we feel that we're, we're in a corner. I'm glad that you didn't do that, man. I'm glad I'm glad I got to talk to you now. Jay Vaughn's like, I'm hella late. What up, Dave? What up, Tribe? What's going on, Jay Vaughn? You good, man? Derek's like, let's see here. George, hey, you drop, you drop another five, George? Hey, man, I stay on top of my health. Have kids to live for. George with the five dollar holla. Don't gotta upgrade. Hey, George. Hey, brother. Hey. Salud again. I appreciate you, man. I like other content creators over here dropping love on your boy. I feel humbled, man. I feel humbled. Hey, okay. They actually left a voicemail. Let me put you guys on mute for a second, guys. Let me go ahead and check this out here. Hold on. If they left a the voicemail now and they call twice, it's got to be important. One, put, one second, guys. Goddamn work calling me. I'm a day off. No, Roy, it ain't Kendra. It's work. You see, I got the promotion and calls are coming in. I'm a day off here. I got to make a phone call. I, the stream don't stop because it's my day off, but I got to make a phone call after I'm done with the show here. God dizzle, man. God dizzle. <laughs> it's legal in Indiana. <laughs> Ain't no Kendra, y'all. Ain't no Kendra. Okay, guys, we got to go to the video now. We are two hours into the stream here. I ain't got to ask y'all. I long stroked y'all to, 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 to get it ready to coincide, to decompress from the Megan Tatori. So here we are, guys. We got a woman here. We talking about six figures. We're talking about dating. Will height be a factor? Will height be a factor? How much he makes, will that be a factor? What about his weight? Will that be a factor? Kids, will that be a factor? Why is she still single? Does she have any kids? Is she a baby mama already? So many questions that we want to get to, but we're going to get to them right now, y'all. We're going to do that right now. Yes, indeedy. Y'all ready? I know y'all ready because y'all dropped them ones earlier. Y'all dropped them ones earlier. Y'all been ready. Y'all been cooking. We've been getting it going here. A part of me thinks I probably should start this one off first here. But you know what, though? Better late than never. All right. Hold on. Let me go do that. All right. Let's go, y'all.
second part of the show. Let's do this. Still going strong here. It's Essence. Essence, where are you calling me from? Uh, DC. 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 How old are you? I'm 38. 38. 38. What you do for a living? I'm an IT project manager. IT. IT project manager. manager. Hold on, she. She in my field, y'all. She in IT project management. Okay. 38. IT project management. Kind of cute. Kind of cute. Not fine. Not a 10. Not gorgeous, but cute. You know? All right. Let's see what else you got going, guys. Essence DC 38 IT project manager. Do you have any kids? No. No kids. No kids. Um, when's your birthday and zodiac sign? Damn, I'm zodiac. A Taurus. Taurus in the building. You know, I'm a Taurus. Taurus gang. All right, but what kind of man are you looking for? Oh, so I made my little. Hold on. You're right, Wash Gamer. 38, strike one. 38 with no kids, but it's an IT project manager. PA thinks like, that's the MF. I'm always cursing out and telling them if it ain't ready yet. <laughs> I hear you, PA. I hear you, PA. <laughs> it ain't ready yet. The code ain't dropped yet. We gonna get to it. Why y'all put us under the pressure? You gonna try to make us go in the gun as developers and app support analysts and stuff like that. And y'all trying to get, you're trying to shove the deliverables down our throats here. I hear you. I, I, I knew exactly reading between the lines of PA taxes to talk about. We in IT. We know what you're talking about here. Cordero's like, at the vibe that she'll be beyond delusional. We're going to get to it, Cordero. Don't worry. We're popping Cordero anyway, man. Mars like, Dave, no talk about Gunna. A1 gangster until Rico calls with those football numbers. I ain't talking about Gunna, man. I ain't talking about Gunna. I, I only did the, the Meg Thee Stallion. I don't feel like talking about Gunna, man. No, nah, man. Ellis is here. Check out. Hey, what's going on, Ellis? With the $2 holla. We're going to up. Wait, we don't got to upgrade. You already hear the $2 holla. How old girl from Chicago doing? <laughs> really, Ellis? As a real man. Hey, hey, first thing, Alice, first thing. Salute. I don't know how she's doing, Alice. Why are you asking me? You asking me like I know what she's going on with her. You acting like I got into her DMs that because she over there on 62nd. You think, you think I'm taking my 650 on the 62nd? Alice? Come on, don't they get carjacked? You know what happens around 61st, 62nd, 63rd, depending on the part of the south side that you're running through? It's called running stop signs. It's called if you see a red light, you slow down and you keep a hard distance so that if something happens, if you got to go ahead and weave out so you don't get boxed in at that red light, you go ahead and weave out. Come on, man. Don't ask me about, oh, girl, how Chicago doing? I, I, I don't deal with them hood boogers. These banshees on Kendra's show. Come on, Alice. Come on, man. Don't do me like that, brother. Don't do me like that. I appreciate the holler. But don't do me like that. <laughs> Let's continue, y'all. Let's get back into this project manager. My little list over here. Oh, she got a list, y'all. Let's get with it. Okay, um, we got a list. What's she working I'm looking with? for the age range of like um, 33 to 45. Uh -oh. Um, I would like him to be five nine and up. Oh, five nine. Um, I want a man that believes in God, God. a man of his word. His word. Um, I don't want a criminal record. No criminal. Um, I'm a sapiosexual, so I intelligence is really important. Like I've definitely dated and been in relationships with men that when I first saw them, I was like, no, and and they won me over. So it can happen. Um, I would say, you know, a, a man that just comes correct and is respectful and thoughtful, like out the gate. Um someone who's open to having children, someone who knows his worth. Um, open to having children. Um, someone who's just physically fit. You don't gotta be super cut it's up, fit. but um, you know, just fit. Oh, um, what else do um, y'all? Like a good smile and good it's oral hygiene, hygiene is hygiene. so, so important to me. This list. Um, oh Lord. What else you gonna say, y'all? Don't don't judge me for this, Kendra. We but, judge you. Um, we I, I do judge want you. someone who makes six figures and up, six but like figures. that's where I'm at. And um, in my past, dating men um, who, who make less than me, it's hard for them to, they to deal with past. it. I can deal with it. They can't deal with it. She, so she doing um, What do you mean? 
Um, like, like I'll never throw in someone's face that I had this and you don't, or look what I've done or look what I got. Um, and, but they still feel inadequate and men have come back and said this to me. This is not my opinion. They've come back and said, I, I felt like I wasn't good enough for you. I felt like I couldn't give you the life that you deserve. So you hear this y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Men. I mean, men naturally. Hold on. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Y'all. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold up. 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 Where do we start here, y'all? Where do we start here? Where do we start here? Wait, we ain't even got to the video yet. And where do we start here, guys? Hold on. Hold on. What's going on, Jay? Well, Cordero says 38. Ma'am, you are done. We're going to get into that, Cordero. First of all, lover of God. I want to get to that first here. I've seen a lot of videos recently. Videos I haven't done. Videos I have done. It's for some reason lately, again, women want the God aspect back in their guys. Right? They want God. They want their man to be in the church. They want to be in the pulpit. We want to say, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Oh, the Lord is good. The Lord is my savior. He's my shepherd. Oh, yeah. He's my rock. He's my shine in the darkness because there's a Lord somewhere. There's a Lord somewhere. But she don't realize is that men these days is tired of these goddamn preachers selling those goddamn lies and lying on the stand on the word of God. We are sick and tired of these collection plates going every 15 minutes here while the pastor drives a brand new car where I see other parishioners barely can get on the bus to get to the goddamn church here. We see the pastor or whoever it is, he over here banging all the chicks in the choir. He banging the women that he getting down with. He double dipping. He triple dipping. He moving around. And as men, we're seeing a losing battle here. Always elevating these women up a dog and the guys out in the situation here. Come on, man. Stop playing with me here. Guys are tired of the church because we see the scam that's going on in these prosperity churches, y'all. I'm not saying that men, you know, are stopped believing in God. They're believing in the sanction of the church. Catering to women. When we say believe all women, no accountability. So, ladies, if you want a man in the church, you don't go on Kendra's show hoping that man is already attending the church here. Because I'll say eight to nine times out of ten, he ain't going to no damn church, especially here. He watching you on Kendra. If you want a man who's in church, go to a church. Don't go on a dating show. Don't go on a dating app. You want a man who loves God, you need to go ahead and do what you got to do to find a single, a church with a singles ministry with men your age and be like, all right, then let me see who over here doing the damn dizzle here, who could be, who I can be under his covenant, who, who can over here and lead this congregation, can go ahead and lead this household here. Don't go on no damn Kendra show looking for this here. Number one. Number two, sound like she want kids, y'all. If you want kids and you ain't got no kids and you 38, I think you need to be pregnant like yesterday, y'all. Them eggs. They, they, I, you, 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 you on the last dime. If you're 38 with no kids, have you gone to a doctor to see that you can actually even have kids? You get to a certain age, you know, you gotta be like Kendra. You might gotta freeze your eggs, or is your eggs even good to even be frozen? <laughs> Women need to do these checks here. Do these checks and balances, right? You're over here talking about you want this, this, and this here. Can you actually be responsible and require this here for the way you're moving? You want a 33-year-old, the youngest. Okay. Okay. We'll see. We'll see how this works out for you. Six figures. Number three. 
She talked about how men talk about, I can't give you the life you're looking for. Sounds like you dating Pookies in the past. Pookie and Ray Ray, dudes who are substandard. You felt, I make this money, so I got them, got to make this money. The problem, though, is that if you date Pookie who make this much money, who's insecure about certain things, of course you're going to feel about you making over six figures. The regular man who make not the regular man, the man who does make six figures, and you make six figures, he ain't insecure about you. He's like, yo. And she going to try to throw her money in my face because she making this money here because I know where I stand at. She need to know where she stands at. I'm just saying. Hey, shout out to Quick with the 199. We upgrade you to the $2 holler, brother. Men know church is a hustle game. Facts, brother. Facts. Facts man. Mad hustle. Mad hustle. Hey, Quick. Salud. Thank you for the holler, man. I appreciate you. Unlike other content creators, man. I appreciate you, brother. Hold on here. What we got, girl? He was like, they have sex with the ladies and pay the pastor. Facts, Jimmy. He was like, I want a man that loves the Lord equals I have been heavily ran through with two kids and is a born-again virgin. Facts, man. Watch gamers like 38, religious, sapiosexual, six figures. She is done. Facts. Terrence Frank is like, coming to America. <laughs> Someone caught it. <laughs> Thank you, Terrence. Someone caught it. <laughs> Watch like poached eggs. Dude's like, say it, Dave. Them eggs are rotten. <laughs> it's like, I don't know where to start. What kind of sex she into? Is that the word in Webster Dictionary? 38, when the child is 18, lady, you will be dying. Gummy. Gummy. Hey, man, crazy. What's going on, Rhino? Cardo's like, look, listen. When I meet women 35 and older with no kids, it's a big red flag. To me, because it always shows they are selfish as duck. Hey, man. That's a good way to look at it, man. Tastes like hard-boiled eggs. Oh, hell no, man. All right, let's get back to the video here. We got the intro from her. Let's get some more information. Does she fall in the same category as all these other women, guys? Professional woman who put her career first, and now that she's 38, thinking that she can get pregnant and find a husband. Let's see. Let's continue, y'all. Let's continue. I really want to be able to... I don't want to say provide because they do want to provide, but I think they want to feel needed. Right. Mm. So, so sometimes what happens is if a man can't fulfill a way to be needed in a woman's life, that's why that's, and that really is the misconception because a lot of women sometimes don't understand. Like I had it all. I had the money. I had it all together. And he mm -hmm. chose a woman that didn't make as much money as me or, you know, like, you know, she didn't have it all together. What you didn't, what you don't realize is that woman fulfilled his need of need. And right. that's important. Like it's literally the worst thing you could do is say, you don't need a man because you mm -hmm. are exiting him out so fast because men want to feel needed. Just like women want to feel love. We want to feel nurtured. He has to be able to do that. So sometimes with a woman who has everything, you know, mm -hmm. it, it could become the challenge, right? right? Um, so I totally get it. I totally get it. And, and and you are right, that is definitely true. Men who don't make a certain amount. I mean, do you you said you want to make six figures, right? So I'm not sure what you make. Well, you, you make at least six figures, I'm assuming. Correct. So yeah. let me add here. Before I made six figures, I didn't care if my girl made six figures, right? I never had this issue. And I want to point this out. I've always been a guy who made a decent salary as I was growing my way up here. I've never been to broke dusty. Never been. I've always been. I can say that I've always been making a minimum average wage. I've been making at my minimum average since I was 24 years old. Right. So you can say that I've always been a little bit above the pay wage. Right. But even if I found someone who's making more than me, I never trip on a girl who made more than me. But you know who does trip is Pookie. No, I didn't trip because I knew I was going to get there. I knew it was only a matter of time for me because I was on my hustle. I've been on my grind. I've been I've talked about my promotion just recently, right, guys? You know, y'all heard me talk about it. I'm, I'm happy this happened, but the work's got to come in now. You get the accolades, but hey, the grind don't stop, right? But I've never tripped on a woman who made more than me. It didn't happen that often. But when it did, I wasn't Pookie. I wasn't Ray Ray. I had money. I could have took her out on trips when we want to go on trips. I can go out to eat. We can do what we wanted. Any that whenever we hear women say, and if they have a good job, they have a good career, and they saying that guys were intimidated. Not about ten men are intimidated, but let's just say 
just to humor them that they were dealing with a guy who made smart little comments. It's not like that. I guarantee you that's a Pookie and Ray Ray who was already peaked at where he was at, knowing that there is really no next level for him to go to. And he sees his lady at the next level and like her where she's at. And then that's where these comments come in at. You're dealing with the dudes who ain't got no, who ain't got no level up. They've already peaked. They peaked in high school. So when these women say, well, these guys are intimidated by me, they don't want to no. You're picking the men who've already been capped out. These men have hit their ceiling. I hate to say it. We do got men here who, ha who have peaked in high school, who have peaked earnestly because they don't want no more for themselves. And some of them, some of these guys here, or, you know, had to say it. We talk about Pookie's Ravens, they're on the lower level. And these women choose these guys. You know why? Because it make them feel good because they got the looks. They got the height. They got that swag. And they feel that they can elevate him by their presence because they doing good. And by themselves doing good, they can make their man do good as well. It doesn't work that way. A man is going to do what he's going to do on his own goddamn time, y'all. <laughs> Ladies, you cannot elevate a man to do something unless he wants to do it. If he's not ready to do it, there is nothing in the world you can do to make that man a better man. You can be a compliment to him, and when he's ready to elevate and you're by his side to fill in the needs so that he don't got to worry about the small things while he's doing what he needs to do, then he can go to the next level. If you're going to be that helpmate. But if he's already here and he's capped out, there's nothing you can do about that. And if you're constantly picking that man, you can't say, man, by my by my salary. No, you choose wrong. So when you choose wrong, you think men move this way. No. And then the men who make this money and you see how you're moving now, it's like, no, nah, we don't want that headache. You're 38 years old, no kids here. If I want kids, then how is that going to work? I got to knock you up like yesterday. Right. She's 38. Hey, 40's around the corner, guys. Women need to do their own homework instead of just playing this guessing game. Have you been to the doctor? Have you checked to make sure that your reproductive organs are working properly? Are your eggs, like I said, rotten? Or are you able to have kids? And if so, maybe in your best interest at 38, you might got to freeze these bad boys, at least a couple of them, what you got left. Uh, whatever the procedure is. Have you gone and done a proper diagnosis or an assessment to find out if you can even still bear kids at 38 because you waited too damn long? And that's the problem with women these days. Think they got all the time in the world. And Mother Nature tells us, hence the word mother, women. Mother Nature tells us that you only have a finite amount of time to bear children. As men here, we can go ahead and sire kids until the day that we die. <laughs> All right. Sperm is created all the time in our bodies. You are born with only a finite amount of eggs. It's not like we're born with the sperm here. And that's all the sperm we got. Sperm is constantly being produced throughout. OK, you are born with your eggs and that's all you get. So are you going to the doctor? Are you getting a proper diagnosis? And are you understanding can you have kids? If you ain't done that, then why the hell are you going to talk about like this here like it can happen? See, women just want to think and don't want to hear the worst because they go to the doctor and they hear the bad news. It goes against their feelings. And it's not what they want to hear because it's not a part of their program. Right? 38 and no kids, man. That's a big red flag, guys. That's a big red flag. I don't know if Ken is going to ask any questions about that, but that's a big red flag. Hey, shout out to my man Azriel here with the 199, brother. You know what we do here? We upgrade you to the $2 holla, brother. I appreciate you. He said, them egg expired two cribbins ago. Eggnog flavor, favor. God, tizzle, brother. You ain't ish. Hey, hey, Azriel, brother. First of his name. <laughs> Salut. I appreciate the holler, brother. I like other content creators do, man. I like that first of your name. I think a Game of Thrones when I see that here. It's like, Azriel. First of his name. Whatever. You know, in Game of Thrones, hey, man, don't get me started on Game of Thrones and House of Dragons, man. Hey, hey this, this live stream will go ahead and I'll go off the ripper on that one, man. Don't get me started. I like that. First of his name.
<laughs> I appreciate the holler, man. Thanks a lot, brother. Thank you, man. I'm humbled by you blessing me, man. Like I said, I'm humbled y'all dropped the $2 on me, man, because it shows that y'all feeling me right now. If it's $2 or 20 man, it's all good, man. Watch Gamer says, wait, did Kendra tell Corey Holcomb I don't need a man a few months ago? Yes, she did, Corey. Watch Gamer, she did tell Corey that. Yes, I, I did that reaction video when Corey was here in Chicago and did the interview on WGCI, and they were having that conversation. You got a great damn memory, brother. I appreciate you. Man, you had to jog my memory on that one. Rod Neal's like, Al Bunny was his four TDs in high school. You know that. I just scored four touchdowns in one game. <laughs> She's straight for the stroke, Corey Holcomb. Right, right, Jay. Right, Jay. We in our community don't want a doctor or a lawyer, but Pookie or on fries at Mom's house got that swag. Right, Jew? I hear you, man. Cordero's like, women focus only on their career are too fussy for me. Men want to feel wanted and needed. You got that right, Cordero. Facts. She was like, I'm 43, no kids, not because of selfish, but medical conditions. I hear that, Sheila. I hear that. And here's the thing, Sheila, you were just married. So, yeah. We're not talking about you, Sheila. There's circumstances. We're talking about this woman here who was 38, and she ain't never been married. You, you had your man. You know what I'm saying? The circumstances, you know, we've, we've discussed this over the summer, you know? So I don't want you to feel some type of way about yourself here, Sheila, you know? Situations happen, but we got a single woman who's never been married, okay? So just want you to understand that everybody's different here. And circumstances change. You had your man. You were you were under your you were under your husband. This woman is looking for a husband. So I hope you don't feel a certain type of way when we had this conversation saying about 38 and over. You were married. Okay. So just want that to go here. What's going on, Joker? What's popping? Mark's like churches are like every product they market to women, so men stop buying and keep their faith at home. Good point, Mark. Good point. That you're right about that, man. You're right. Yeah, gotcha. I hear you, Sheila. Yeah, yeah. You don't got, hey, Sheila, you you got to, your circumstances are different. You're a widower. You know what I'm saying? You're a widower. You know, that's different than a 38-year-old career woman who never got married. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, no worries. I understand. But I still want you to think that, you know, when we have these conversations, that we're talking about, like, situations like you, when, the, of course, you know, we have uh, untimely things in life. You know? Hit the like button. That's right, Theo. Let's get back to the video. Let's hear some more of her, guys. Yeah, if a guy makes less. I just think that, and it's a shame because if you can find a good guy who, not just saying in your case, but those yeah. men who are intimidated, you know, you're still to me valuable. So that confidence mm -hmm. should still come out there, even though mm -hmm. if you don't make as much as the woman. But the woman also, like you said, can't make him feel less than because right. he doesn't right. make too much. So. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I've right. never said to someone, I don't need you, or I've never said anything like that. I I, I think I do make men feel needed. So, but who knows? Yeah. Anyway, moving and on. And these are things I want to say, the person when I began this show is mm -hmm. completely different than the person I said today. And I'm still always learning, but I have learned so much about men from hosting this dating show. And it's for two and a half years hearing their side. Because as a woman, I was I used to sound like a lot of women that came on my show until I, I literally now have the data and understanding. So, but let's keep going. She what's, has your, the data. what's your deal breakers? Okay. Um, not speaking my love language to me, which is quality time. Mm -hmm. That seems to be like, I've lost a lot of potential relationships because they didn't have the time. Um, someone who's- Well, you know, a man that makes a lot of money is a, is a working man. Well, I mean, in D.C., if you're in the IT field, which is like most everybody I know, everybody's making six figures. So they have a nine to five job. People, no, no, like, no, no. Time. Hold on. Were they, hold were they on. busy? No, hold on. No, no, no. I got to stop her now. now. We're seeing why she's single right now. I just heard what we're going to let this play here. I just heard why she's single now. She's like, I'm in D.C. Everybody in IT makes 100000 a year. <laughs> no, they don't. I understand that IT is a high paying career. Not everybody makes a hundred thousand. Wanna know why? I've done my homework. Okay, what my job do here? I'm my job. I'm in Chicago, but my job's also based in New York. But we also have who we affiliate with out in D.C. So I looked at prices here. Right, there are people who do make six figures. It's a, it's a large segment, but in IT, it's not a nine to five job, y'all. 
No, it's not. Not every aspect of people who work in IT is nine to five. And now we're seeing why she's single because she seems like doesn't have any grasp on people who work in her field in the hours they work on how busy they are. I'm in IT right now. Anyone know something? I don't work nine to five. No, I just told you I didn't get off to seven o'clock last night. I didn't get off to seven o'clock last night. What about Saturday? I went to last year on Saturday, guys. You want to know something? I couldn't because I was on call and I was working and things happen. Can't talk about my projects. I don't want to get in fired or in trouble. I can't talk about the things that goes on. Thing, I was doing some things and we I had multiple projects. I didn't get done at 6 p.m. Saturday night. That's why I last year on Sunday. Because I couldn't last year on Saturday. Because I had to work. People in IT, I, here's the thing. The, the part of IT that I do now, I have been on call working nights and weekends since 2007. 15 years going on here, guys. We, I don't do a nine to five. No. Rod's like, Dave, you got all, you got all the time in the world just because you are in IT. No, we don't. Guys. The reason why I'm able to camp up the way I do is because of this. I work from home. And then when I get done, I have all my stuff together so I can go ahead and live stream without wasting any time. But no, nine to five? No, we don't have nine to fives in IT. People are on call. People who are people who are subject matter experts, SMEs. We don't put in 40 hours a week. There was a period of time where the, I used to keep my laptop in the backseat of my car when I used to leave the house. You know why? I would get that phone call, and I knew I couldn't do nothing about it. <laughs> PA took like, yeah, we're always on call. They don't call a project manager because they don't know ish. Exactly, PA. You're a project manager. You do your hours during work hours. You don't got to work late. You can finish up your spreadsheets, your scripts at 10, 10 a.m. the next day. Or you're only working late because you've been a lazy ass and you didn't get your scripts done. You didn't get your reviews done. So you're working late this so that you can be on time in the morning time to do your presentations. But for any woman that's going to say IT is like, well, we in DC make a hundred thousand. That's nothing. And nine to five, you should have time. No. You want to know something? I wanted to do something yesterday. I actually wanted to do a live stream yesterday and I wanted to do some shopping yesterday, but my black ass didn't get done to seven o'clock. And you know what that means? I didn't get a chance to do no shopping, and I didn't get a chance to do, go do what I want to do here. We know why she's single now. She works in the field and doesn't even understand that other men are working late. She works in the same field as me here. She is 38 years old. She's only four years younger than me here. And then she is going to say here that men work nine to five in IT. Wrong. You know what, though? Everybody in my area who I deal with, not just my team, all the teams that I got to deal with, we don't work nine to five. We are working past 5 p.m. And you know what, though? Let's say that it's at 5 p.m. we do go home. We come back home to come back online. <laughs> Because we realize, like, yo, I'm in the office right now. Can I get this done and go home and be late? Or is it best for me to leave now and just hop back online when I get in the house? Cordero's like, bro, I put in six hours a week as an HR manager. So trust, I wish I was 40. I hear you, man. I had one job where I averaged 70 hours a week one time. 70. 70. Guys. I put in, I put in my hours, guys. I put in my time, and I'm still putting in my time. I've had, I've had a job where I was working seven to seven, Monday through Friday, at least. And those days too, where I did get off at five p.m. because I knew I had to work late. I say, yo, let me leave a half hour early because there's traffic out there, so I can get in the house, turn my laptop on, so I don't have any breaks in the action, so that I can work all night. She is single because she don't understand that men work. In her own field, she don't understand that men work longer than 5 p.m. I work with people in D.C. I deal with people in the goddamn government in D.C. I know the hours that they work. They're on the East Coast time. I'm in Central, but I got to think East Coast. Come on, guys. Come on. 
another delusional woman who don't even understand what she works and what she deals with. Let's continue, guys. Let's hear some more she got to say here. Already the delusion is here. It'd been one thing if she, you know, she understood that, you know, she if she understood that people work long hours. She was like, I work in IT and they get off at 5 p.m. No, we don't. That, th that, that messed me up, guys. That messed me up. That messed me up. I feel sorry people are trying to date in this game here. And these women looking for high-paying high, high paying guys out here making 100000 a year. Then they get off at 5 p.m. They may get off at 5 p.m. to get home so they can make themselves some food and finish the rest of their work for the night because they know they stay in the office. They're not going to get home to 9 p.m. If, if they don't leave at 5 p.m. That's the game, guys. You want to know something? I was supposed to be in the office yesterday. I looked at my schedule, and I was like, if I go in the office today... I know that I might be stuck here. I said, I'm going to work from home today. I work from home, and it was a good call. Could you imagine if I went to the office last night? You guys don't know. If I went to the office last night, I would not have been home till like 930. The luck should be able to work from home, but still I'm working late. Let's continue, guys. She's already lost. We're going to hear some more, but... Just the fact that she works in the same field as me, she lost. Let's continue, guys. Okay, well, so I have, right, so the men that I'm talking about, they did, they had a job, they had a side business, they was in school, they, they got kids, and so, and, and I would say to them, hey, listen, it seems like you're not really ready to date someone like me, like someone who needs time. Oh, I had the time, I'll make the time, I'll make the time, and they could never make the time. So, um, you know. Well, that, but that, I mean, that is a, you're going to have If a guy told you that, he means, it, he basically told you, you weren't worth the time. If you can say that you being in DC, and she's a cute girl, guys, let's just keep it a buck here. I'm not a mean person. Just on the outside, if you just saw her for the first time, you saw the thumbnail, right? She's a cute woman. I'm not saying she's fine or beautiful or gorgeous. She's cute, right? So... If she's finding these guys in D.C. and then they're telling her, I'll make the time, they don't make the time. You know what they're telling you? That you're not worth the time. Y'all hear that? Ladies, if a man says that he will make the time, he will make the time. The busiest man in the world will make time for his interests. What, whether that time involves making money or when he want to get some downtime and he wants to kick it with somebody, he will carve out some time for himself to do that. And he will make let the person who, who's in his life have that opportunity. She could lose that hairstyle. Yeah, you're right about that, Red Pill. <laughs> yeah, we're yeah, you're right. She could she could use a different style. You're right. But a man who is busy, who got a job, who got a, a side gig, starting a business, he's put his hours in, he will make time to where he deems that time is worthy. If he feels making money is worth it, he's going to make money. If he feels he wants some downtime to, to chill with his woman, he's going to do that. But if he says he's going to make time, he doesn't make the time. No, he's telling you that you were never worth the time. Okay? Got to remember that, guys, ladies. If you found a guy who's making two hundred thousand a year, three hundred thousand a year, career pushing, getting to the bag, he's working these hours, he's good looking, he's the height that you want to make, whatever the case may be. But he's always working, he's always grinding. But if he does make some time from, if he makes time for you time to time, he's serious about it. But if he don't make the time, you are R U O, recreation you only. When he does make the time. Got to remember that. Damn, dude says, get with her, Dave. She waiting on you. Not at 38, brother. I already told y'all, if I get back in these streets, you ain't going to be no 38 years old, damn. <laughs> you hear that laugh? <laughs> it's not because of kids. <laughs> uh -uh. I ain't dealing with no 38-year-old woman if I get back out these streets, damn. Mm -mm. Mm -mm, brother, I'm telling you, I got standards. If I, if I decide to get, if, if, if I was ever, to be back in these streets again. It's going to be a chick in her 20s, man. I'm sorry. You ain't going to have me messing with someone that's already, you know, she she's 38. She already, she already got built-in issues. 
When I say issues, she's already got what she got in her mind here, and there is no letting go. I see a 20-year-old woman, she ain't got all those extra years of hardship on her. <laughs> I'm just going to keep it a buck here if I get back on these streets, guys. The women, y'all need to hear this here. For guys who ain't out here, and if you ask them, well, if you were to start dating again, what are you looking for? It ain't no one in their 30s or 40s. You got too many miles on you. And when you say you got too many miles on you, means that you've seen too much of the word. They speaking sham. I'm not speaking sham. <laughs> I'm keeping it a buck here. A woman in her 40s, if I was get back on the streets, you got too many miles on you. I need someone who's got less worldly experience. The world ain't done you no wrong. You got a positive viewpoint here. If you got a positive viewpoint on the word, you know, the world, and if I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing here, then me and you can mix. If you gone through and said, oh, niggas ain't shit. All these niggas, these black dudes, they don't die. Hey, come on, man. She already, you're, you're already in trouble. <laughs> What's the age range, Dave? 25 to 30, Max. 25 to 30, Red Pill. 25 to 30. If I was back in these streets, brother. 25 to 30. Mm -mm. Not no 38 to 40, brother. Not no 38-year-old. If she was 38 years old and on my pocket here, and I was out here in these streets, I'll tell her straight up, yo, we we here to have a good time. I'm here for a good time, not for a long time. <laughs> okay, brother, just keeping it a buck here. I'm here for a good time, not for a long time. It's hard to find an old woman with good energy. Yeah, good energy, ready to go have a good time, not already jaded by all the men that's been in her life. Think about a 38-year-old woman got too many men with too many experiences compared to a 28-year-old woman. All right? I'm just saying. I'm not out here in these streets, but if I was, you ain't going to give me no 38-year-old. I'm just saying, right? I don't need you looking the same age as me. I don't need them extra lines of stress that you got coming home here too. Nah, I need the fresh, tight, supple skin that showcase life has not been bad to you yet. Roy's like, they don't want no Pookie and Ray Ray barrage. I don't want no Pookiesha. Nah. See, these women at 38 years old been doing so many pookies and ray rays that they themselves turn to a pookisha or they got them extra miles on them that they already jaded and got that negative energy towards you. And you know what, though? You can't turn that clock back. Why don't you deal with somebody who don't got the stress and don't got the miles? It's like buying a brand new car. I hate to say that, though. When you buy a brand new car, you got a warranty. You got the fresh new car smell. It runs. The engine runs a certain way. You buy that used car with 50,000 miles on it, you know, it's going to work fine. It's going to do what it's supposed to do. But the previous owner broke that car in and got the first 50. In. It's probably got the best 50,000 miles that car is going to give you. So here you walk in at number two. Be like, yeah, I got a good car. It's certified and everything. But, you know, it, it, it's not brand new. Just saying. All right, guys, let's get back to the video. So I got the question asked, you know, and then got me down this path here. You know what I mean? Red Pill's like, I feel you, Dave. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just being a buck here. I, I think most guys would think that way. I, I, here's the way I got to look at it, too, Red Pill. I know if I decide to go back out here in these streets, I got options. Not being arrogant. I don't move that way, but... I think all men should move this way too. You get to a certain age in life, you understand the game. I'm not an I'm an asshole to a degree, but I'm an asshole because I know what I want. And I know what I won't deal with. But women will call that an asshole. I'm just saying those like, why would I? If I want to go back out here in the market again, why would I deal with someone who's going to add extra stress? Someone who already don't have those miles on you. Let's get back to the video, guys. Derek's like, looks looks of work to keep an older car working. Yeah, man. 38 year old Kenny Show is way past the danger zone, right? D Samuel Jerk is like psych, psych cut means lesbian. And our oh, y'all having us another conversation, Jerk. Okay, let's get back to the video. You're gonna have to do this balance because mm -hmm. a, a man that makes a certain amount of money is a busy man, right? Yeah, well, so like I said, I work nine to five, he can work nine to five, we can both make the same amount of money, and I can see you at five. No. Ooh, and there you have it. Let's <laughs> no, Kendra, no, it's there. No, it's not there. You have it. If you want a man making a hundred thousand, he's knocking off at 5 p.m. 
See, I don't get why women think this here. We're back to the show, guys. We're back to the video here, right? If you want a man making a decent amount of money, he's not working set hours. He's working his regular shift. He's working off hours. He's working weekends. This man is busy. There's a reason why that only 7% of black men make 100,000 a year. There's a reason why only 10.3% of all men in the United States make over 100,000 a year. Because to get to this kind of money, to get this kind of salary requires hours. It requires dedication. It requires boots in the ground it requires you putting your best foot forward because men ain't getting to the bag like this here because the average black man makes forty two thousand a year the average white man makes fifty thousand a year no that means the average man is broke these days y'all with inflation the average man is broke here so when the man is making this money he's getting to the hours because he know he has to he can scale back and not work these hours means that he's not getting to the money Dave, that's why that's why single she needs to buy a dog woof woof and meow. Right, D Samuel. Women don't understand these things here. A man had if he, a man making this much money means that he has to work to get this money. If he's working a nine to five, you can make forty thousand work making nine to five, fifty, sixty thousand. If you want to get to the back, you want to be six figures, you want to be top five percent, you need top one percent. You know what that means? 50 hours is the norm. 60 should be a given. Seven should be like, oh, <laughs> yo, we have some things to do this week. <laughs> 80 was like a couple of things broke, but we're doing it. it. Like you said, Court, it requires hours to make this money. You work less hours, that means you make less money. You get what you put in. So when she says, oh, I can get off at five and he can get off at five. Now, nah, if you want a guy making this money here, hey, if you want a guy, I, I, hey, if, if you want a guy making 50, let's say here, I'll, I'll give you one here. Splitting hairs, fifty to seventy thousand a year might get you this here. Might get you this here. You want a hundred thousand up? Be prepared that this man is working. Hey, baby, suit for dinner? No, nah, I'm at the desk right now. I'm busy. Even gets up at five. Sound like he can't have any hobbies. Good point here, Rod. Because that man who's getting to the bag is he's gonna need an outlet outside of his woman. He needs hobbies. He needs something that keeps him in track here. Eighty minimum last fifteen years, Team Peterson. Hey, I feel you, brother. Hey, get to that bag, team. Like I said, that was one point I was doing 70 a week for two years, minimum. And that's not, and, that, and I was working Saturdays and Sundays. I get home, I, I take my laptop out of my out of my bag and put it in the corner of my bed and turn it on and have everything set up. You know why? Because I knew I was gonna get a phone call. So all I gotta do is roll over in the bed and just unlock the computer and work in my bed. That's how I was working, guys. Knew when I was gonna get a call in the middle of the night and I roll over and work in my bed. Let's continue, guys. There's that. What's the mother deal breakers? What deal breakers? Um, um, you know, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, disrespectful or argumentative, um, dramatic and emotional. Uh, someone who can't own their actions. Like, if you made a mistake, it's okay. Just say, "I made a mistake. I'm not going to do it again," or "I didn't see anything wrong with it, and I will do it again." And that, and we can move on from there. We can figure it out. But just, just own it. Um, Heavy drinkers, smokers, um, bad breath, poor oral care, drug users or abusers. I'm away, they stop and y'all. Okay. Does he have to be in DC? That would be my preferred option in the area. Um, because I want to be able to get to my boo in, in 20, 30 minutes. But I'm not totally, you know, closing the door. If you're amazing and you live in Washington or whatever, she is still on the list, California, we'll figure it out. But okay. The Dead Sea um, Scroll. Right, what's, the age range you, what's the age range you want to date? 33 to 45. Can he have kids already? Yes. Do you want kids? I do. You want so kids. he's got to like be open to having kids. Okay. Y'all hear that? Okay. She wants kids at 38, guys. That has to happen like yesterday. That has to happen like yesterday. She waited too long. Now you're calling on the Kendra show, hoping your DMs get filled up here, trying to find the dude here. And I hate to say this. Tribe, eight-ish crew, fellas, tell me if I'm wrong here. Tell me if I'm wrong. Maybe just the way I move, I think here. I see a woman that's 38 years old with no kids. If I was out here in these streets, if I was trying to smash, I'm thinking she ain't trying to have no more kids, even though she's saying that because you wait just on no kids, 
I'm already thinking that because of the egg situation, how old you are, whatever the case may be, I'm thinking that's his lip service. I'm trying to get it in. I'm looking at you as R-U-O. You older now. You ain't trying to have no kids. Even though you said you went this long here. This is me personally. I'm just going to say, sir, unless you come out to fit me say, I want kids, Dave. This is the first date. I want kids. No, I'm just thinking that's his lip service. You're just saying that just to say it because it sounds nice. <laughs> Just saying. I'm not saying, but I'm saying. Do y'all think that same way too as well? If a woman gets to a certain age, be like, yo, at this point in the game right now, you're either going to get it or you're not going to get it. Shout out to Ellis here with the $5 holler here, man. It says, I was doing 80 hours, and the one question I hate was, what you do for fun? <laughs> hey, Ellis. Hey, brother. Hey, hey. Salud. What do I do for fun, Ellis? I'm on YouTube talking to y'all right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I work Monday through Friday as well. I work Saturdays and Sundays. I work nights. Dave, what do you do for fun? Let's see here. I get it. As soon as I get done with work, I hop on YouTube. Okay. We're not on YouTube. We do. I'm planning Vegas. I didn't talk about that. I'm planning a Vegas trip, but that's boxing. But you know what's going to happen when I'm in Vegas? I'm taking my equipment to Vegas, and I'm going to be on YouTube working still. <laughs> I work on vacation. This is work, guys. No matter what you think I'm having a good time, I'm drinking. We having it with the eight inch crew is here. This is work. There's a lot that goes into this here, right? When I was in Vegas in May, what was I doing? I was working. I live stream every single goddamn day. And when I wasn't live streaming, what happened? I was out in the street trying to look for an extension cord because I forgot the packet so I could live stream those other days. <laughs> Hey, what happened when I was in New York a couple months ago? I was actually working because my job is in New York. But y'all saw the pictures. I took pictures because I was going to do double duty and be on YouTube if I didn't lose my goddamn voice and been live streaming in New York as well. <laughs> right, Ellis, what do you do for fun? I work for fun. <laughs> Facts, brother. Facts, what do you do for fun? Come on, man. I'm out here trying to get this money. Hey, I we got a finite amount of time to get this loot because you know what happens? Women don't understand this, but we do early. We will be aged out of the marketplace. There will be a period of time where that if we are doing what we're supposed to be doing, we will get we will get aged out of our position, and either they're gonna lay us off or find some reason to get rid of us, where the case may be. But there will be a point in time where we'll be aged out and we can't work no more. So men understand that we got to get to the back we can because once we can't get to the back, what's left for us is being a goddamn Walmart greeter. <laughs> You see how we think about this here, but we don't never hear women talk about this stuff here. What, what do we see women talking about? They're looking for a man to retire them. They're looking for a man to retire them. You know what I'm saying? Get into the bag. I feel that, Dave. Yeah. Facts working on vacation. I'm planning my Vegas trip in January, right? This is like my little celebratory. I'm going to, I'm, you know, I'm going to talk about this at the end here, but I'm going to plan a trip in January to go to Vegas, but I'm bringing my equipment. So even though I'm taking days off from my career because I'll be out of town, I'm still going to be working. That's what men do for fun. We work. We grind. We put in those two steps because we know there's going to be a day we can't work no more. Let's continue. Let's see what she's going to say now. Um, does he have to look a certain way? Looks, y'all. Um... Not exactly. Like I said, you know, five, nine and up, physically fit. I mean, I would obviously like for you to be handsome because we want to have kids, you know. <laughs> kids. Um, but, yeah, I'm not I'm not um, firm on that. OK, let's do the Kendra Cam. Kendra Cam, y'all, here you go. What we got here? I look like a nice place. Oh, thank you. She do got a nice house. Not bad for That's DC, good. little living room area. OK, I get mm -hmm. that. Got a little fireplace, a little 40 something to you. Okay, all right. This is essence, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to say something here. The way how slim her body looks, that's a waist trainer. She's wearing black spandex with a black t-shirt so you can't see the lines on the waist trainer. She got a body, but she got a waist trainer on. Oh, have a nice shape. When you turn around, you get that curvy. Hold on. Yes, but, ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm going to go back to it again. Okay. Hold on. There we go, guys. Hold on. We're going to get to this here, guys. Hold on. All right. Okay. You see that spot there? This is Essence, right? Yep. Okay. I'm going to leave that one right there, guys. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, guys. Hold on. Okay. Here we go. She holding up top, guys. 
She got a nice little body. You know what I'm saying? But she is rocking a waist trainer. She is. No, it, it, it's not I think you're right. I know I'm right. All right? I'm not saying weight trainers are bad, but they're manipulative, okay? Because you thinking that she got this flat-ass tummy here, right? No, nah, no. Nah. What happens is, though, is that when women wear all black, it's automatically a slimming color, right? You have the waist trainer. You can't see the lines of the waist trainer. You can't see the grooves of it, you know, when it's when you're wearing a black on black, guys. You know what I mean? So she is. She got le- she got nice little shape here, but she is being manipulative with the waist trainer. I can see it plain as day here. I'm shocked that most of you guys don't see that because I I'm, every time I do a video and I recognize a waist trainer, you'd be surprised. People in the comments section after the fact was saying, "Dave, I'm not sure it's a waist trainer. I know it's a waist trainer. Y'all need to, I'm that dude for a reason. I can spot a waist trainer a mile away. Come on." I can spot a waist trainer a mile away. Hopefully, it's not a push-up bra she has on, too. Oh, yeah, she got support. That, 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 she, she got one with the bras that got, like, the heavy metal lining on there that keeps a little perky, too, as well. She got, you know, that, that's not a push-up bra. It's a support joint here, uh, Larry. Come on. I, I, I got eyes, man. I know the game. I've been around women my entire life. I've seen women dress. I know how they do. Come on, man. In the comments section, Ninja watching, you know, the, the post late game who watch these things here. I don't want to see any of y'all come in my comment section today. Hey, that's not a waist trainer. Yes, it is. I see my share of waist trainers. I've seen them. I've seen them. She, she, she got a nice body. She got a cute face. Some of y'all get on her hair, but that is a waist trainer. That is not a completely flat stomach. Hold on, let me do. Let me pull up my screen again. You think that stomach's completely fat? You can see there's a little bulge right there in the front there. You see she's flexing there, but if you look, there's a little bit of a bulge. There's not a shadow there. That bulge is the shirt, and that's part of the waist trainer, guys. Come on, man. I can spot that a mile away. Nothing wrong. I, I mean, hey, you know, going out to dinner, you know, you're going out, and she rocking herself. She's looking good, yeah, but I need to know how that stomach looks 24-7 without the waist trainer. Jay's like, I don't give a about the tummy. She can have that. It's something else I look at. There's <laughs> a that dude there. Does she did, that dude named Dave? Does she drop the IG? Said Theo. Not yet, Theo. She ain't dropped the IG yet. But if you want to know something, I done my homework ahead of time here. So we're gonna hear her drop the IG. But if you're wondering on the thumbnail, that is her in the picture. All right, you you see Megan on one part of the thumbnail, you see another woman. That's actually her because that's from her IG, y'all. <laughs> Okay, so I did a little bit of homework to help you all out. I didn't give you no janky, like, you know, blurry, you know, Kendra camera photo here. I've been doing some extra homework and went to the IG to pull up a better photo for the thumbnail here. So that's what's up here, guys. Let's continue. Yeah. Oh, have a nice day. When you turn around, you get that curvy. Yes, <laughs> but ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> I got the body charm. I says, when was your last relationship? <clears throat> Ended early last year, 21. Okay. You don't have to answer, but I'm going to ask, when's the last time you was intimate with someone? I'm going to decline to answer, but I will say he is an option for me, but I don't know if he's, if, if he's ready. Really? You think he's not ready. Did he say he's not ready? Um, cause he hasn't said that he, he is, you know, men who want you. Hold on. Before she gives her explanation. She said that she wouldn't say the last time that she got her buns glazed, which means that this guy she talking about right now, buns glazed her in the last week, y'all. He's not an option because he's not trying to wife her. He's using her. I'm saying using her. He recognized the situation as what it is. I, can, I She's a cute girl who I can get it in, but I ain't giving her no more and nothing less. Let's see what she's going to say now. Let's continue. You make it clear that I want you. So do you want him in a in a more official way? I would be open to that if if that's what he wanted. Have I think you, he's the type of guy that goes for what he wants and he makes it very clear what he wants. So But did you make it clear to him what you want? No, I think that men are the leaders of relationships. But and you slept with him. Right. Yeah. So why didn't you tell him what you want before you slept with him? Wow, Ken is speaking. Uh, well, we'll have to talk about that sideline, Kendra. I'm just <laughs> talk about that sideline. Uh, what are we? Well, this is listen. You are a well put together woman, right? Mm-hmm. You're beautiful, naturally beautiful. Great mm-hmm. job, great spirit, great body. 
It is not, a, you have the power. See, ladies, this is the problem. This is really the problem. Women <clears throat> like you who were all born with crowns, right? But some no, people not. say you have a crown on your head and you're not-, not Everybody got a crown. Me. There is no bad request in saying, what are your intentions? Before I'm intimate with someone, this is what I desire. Do you desire the same too? Because mm -hmm. you gave them the best of you by already having intimacy with you and you didn't even communicate to him what you wanted. And again, I know we live in a, a, a new time where situations are so popular, but they're so popular because women are not standing by what they want. So like if you desire something more, I mean, because this is why I said is what you want. I know we grown. Some women don't really want a relationship. I just want a companionship. That's what I needed. More power to you, <laughs> sister. There's no judgment. But if you are seeking a partnership in life, know that you're a queen and anybody that gets to be in your presence is lucky. But Absolutely. what happens is we don't act like it no more. We made the man the prize by going along with him and hoping one day he's going to see how awesome we are. And he never really gets it because we didn't act awesome. You know, we didn't come through awesome. We didn't come through demanding what it was and willing to walk away if we don't get what we want. So right. I don't know the situation with that guy, but if you desire more, you can communicate that. And if he's not the one that you got to keep it moving. Now I am going to be honest too. I'm, I don't know who this man is. I'm assuming he's probably attractive, probably great sex. I don't know. Makes money. These are the men that get spoiled. Okay. Cause usually the guy you ain't trying to really break it all down to got something in that category, good sex, good looking or money. These are the three qualities that I see a lot of times women turn that blind eye to in order to stay within it. And that's fine too. That's fine too. But you might not end up with a partner going that yeah. way. So at some point, Kendra been listening to Kevin Samuels. Kendra over here quoting Kevin Samuels right now. Right? She put her on blast and you saw the look in her face. I don't know if you saw that, but the reason why that this guy is a potential is because she broke down. It's like, oh, yeah, he, he has all the qualities. But then she was like, well, the man makes the first foot forward. But he's like, you're sleeping with him. Did you tell this beforehand? She's like, no. What did Kevin Samuels used to say, Tribe? When he spoke to women, what did he say? Women, you need to come with your intentions in dating. You can weed out so many pookies and ray rays. The guys who think that you are only RUO, recreation you only, if you come out off the gate saying, I am looking for marriage. I am looking for a family. I am looking to have someone to have kids with, but I want these kids in the context of us being married first. You now you may eliminate that guy who you think is sexy and makes you feel good, but you eliminate the pookies, you eliminate the, the Ray Rays, you eliminate those Chads, you eliminate those Tyrones. But when you don't put that on the table and you give the man sex, and at your age, he's gonna be thinking, Oh, you're along for the ride, then this is what we're doing. This is the get down for the get down here. Let me go ahead and glaze those months. And keep it moving. Now, if you start requiring more, here's what's going to happen. You didn't ask for that in the beginning. You want more now when we, this is what we had in the beginning here? I'll keep it moving then. And you know what's going to happen when that ha when that occurs then? Then she is going to, if she really wants to be with this guy, she's going to not force this guy for marriage, but then he, she'll allow him to keep continue to buns glaze, but not as often because like he ain't ready. But when she gets in the need to get hot and bothered and she need her back broken, she don't call dude up. <laughs> Happens every single time. Kendra's not wrong in this aspect here. The one part she's not wrong is, is that women, you can say, I am not having sex with anybody unless I know that this man is serious and committed and I see him as a future husband. If we're not talking serious here, I'm not giving up the buns. You know what's going to happen? You're going to eliminate those pookies and Ray Rays and you will find the man who is serious, who wants to be down with you. Now, you might eliminate 90% of the men. You, the guys who you may be thinking this is the guy may not want to rock with that, but at least you know you're you're getting rid of that ahead of the schedule here, and you don't got to worry about calling the Kenner show saying, "Oh man, it's dogs, all black man is shit." Because you know, I you know we we were having a relationship, but then he didn't he wasn't ready for the seriousness. But you no, know, it got to ask the question: 
did you say how serious you were about a commitment? No, but men got to put it up here. You give him the man sex. He got the cow without buying it. He over here milking you for free. I'm not trying to get on men, but I'm just saying, though, it's just a point that men appreciate both types of women. Women need to get this out of their heads here. We love our goody two shoes, the one we want to rock to, marriage material women, and we love our 304s. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I thought the bombshell. Because men are some body counts. Oh, you a whore. You a 304. You a thought rocket. You you a banshee. We don't like the whores. We don't like the 304. Yeah, we do. What we don't like is the women who want to act like their marriage material, but they turn out to be 304. If at the end of the day, if we knew for a fact, if we saw some women here and they're like, oh, those are the RUOs. Those are the 304s. Those ones are just for a good time, not for a long time. And then you can look over here and be like, oh, she wants a committed relationship here. I got to be on my P's and Q's because we know that she is looking for something more. Like if we knew that women were not playing games and who were whores, but, you know, but they're 304s, but they claim they want to be married and vice versa. If we could distinguish, we wouldn't have these problems here. The problems that we have here is the women who are false flagging. Because if you are a 304 and if you're here for a good time, you can find those men too. Those men out there looking for that too. And if you're looking for a marriage, there's men who do want to settle down as well because men are busy who you're looking for and just want one because they're too busy to go through two or three. Not everybody can be Lee or Jamie or Jamie Foxx. Not everybody can be on the, uh, on the bachelor uh, lifestyle here. You know what I mean? If we knew the difference, it would not be a problem. Mm -mm. Hold on. I missed some chats here. I got to get caught up here. We got my man T. Lee with the $2 holler here. No questions or comments. Hey, he just came here for the straight love, y'all. <laughs> hey, T. Lee. Hey, brother. Salud. Thank you for the holler, man. I appreciate it. Like other people who don't want to announce, uh, announce their hollers, man. Thank you for the $2 holler. Thank you. Another thing, too. Women don't all have crowns. Not everybody's a goddamn queen. Because if that's the case, then not every man's a goddamn king, okay? I hate when women do this here. Not everybody's a queen. There is levels to life here. Not everybody's royalty. Not everybody's going to be a CEO. Not everybody's going to be president. Not everybody's going to be a CIO. Not everybody can be a manager. You need some people on the front lines. You need some sergeants. You need some privates. You need some lieutenants. You need some corporals. You need some cooks. You need people who are doing lookouts. Not everybody can lead the squadron. Not everybody can be queens. When she said that, that's, that's, a, that's a lie. Not everybody has a crown. For every one queen, there's got to be subjects under the queen. Can't make this up, guys. Can't make this up. Team Peter, day of intention, commitment before six. Exactly, Team Peterson. Date with intention. Date with intention. If you put your cards on the table, men would respect that. If a man knew you was recreational, hey, I'm just here for a good time. All right, cool. We, we got on the table. Yo, she, she, she down for the car. She down for the buns glazing. And if a woman told you, hey, you know what, though? I, I, I could be a good time, too, but I, I only want one man. I want to get married one day. I don't want to be out here in these streets. Then a guy could be like, okay, I ain't ready to be a serious right now. Or a guy could be serious like, yo, all right, cool. Let's see where this goes here. Be honest. Octavia's like, she has low self-esteem. That's why she's giving the buns so easy. Yeah. This dude got the buns right now. She wish he was potential. She wish that he would wife her right now so she don't got to be on Kendra's show. But you know what, though? You gave up the buns and you're giving up regulator right now so he knows he don't got to do anything more than be himself. He don't got to give any more. Let's continue, guys. You just got to take your put your crown back on your head and demand what you ask for. So I totally agree with everything that you're saying. This is not normally how I move. Um, oh, really? It just happens to be something that happened in, in my most recent situation. It was kind of a, a weird situation how it, how it happened because normally I'm like, um, 
you know, I have to get to know you to a certain level to even be comfortable. So it was, it was without telling the world my business. It, it was a different situation. That's not normally how I move is what I'll say. And we do talk about, now? are we open to uh, being more um, in the long run? And he did say, yes, I'm open to these things. So Okay. Well, I didn't know you guys did have the conversation, but yeah. no, but I'm going to say, this is why the game. I think she's saving face. It's not how I always move, but just has happened now. But here's the problem though. Even you say this is not how you move. You're moving this way now. So you know what this means, tribe? This is how you move. <laughs> you see how she tried to flip that up? Say, let, let, hey, I will humor her for a second, right? Even if this is the first time that she moved this way with this guy here. It doesn't matter. Because she's moving this way now, and she is still currently moving this way at this man because it because the fact that she would not even say the last time he smashed those buns, because we know it was recently. So I don't care what you're saying here. This goes for men too, guys. I don't want to hear you guys say or any women say it's just for everybody in general. All right, saying it. I know we don't move this way. For some reason, this is how I'm moving. It doesn't matter. Because you're moving this way now. And it's your current situation. So you know what that means? This is how you move. If this was a one-time thing and that person was no longer in the picture and that relationship and it's like back in the summertime and you ain't had them buns glazed, you cut them out, you had your situation ship and you moved on. Okay, cool. If this is current, this is how you move. Don't get mad at me. I don't make the rules. You're moving this way. Right, tribe? Let me know if I'm wrong here. Because it's one thing if you did something once and then you stopped and it's like, yeah, that's the last time I don't do it anymore. No if it's currently happening, this is your current situation. This is how you currently move. And you can't say that you don't move this way until you cut that situation off and you go back to something different. Right? Right? I'm just saying. You can't say I don't move like that, then that's how you're moving. We deal in the present. Your present right now is current. So if you're in a situation ship with no responsibilities, no commitments, and he still has access, this is how you move. And until you cut that off, this is your scenario. Continue. The game is is really messed up ladies because you're such a quality woman like Thank you literally you. have it all together like no man should be able to get that far with you if, if they not coming correct but correct. when you have quality women you know and let me pause that here that is a line that so many women say what Kendra's saying here right now. You're such an educated woman. You're such a quality woman. Why are you doing this to yourself? It doesn't matter. She chose to do this. I don't care what any qualities that you see in her with her professional life. I don't care about any qualities that you may see about her, how her looks, her body, her little Coke bottle. And she do got, even though she got a waist trainer, she do got a Coke bottle. She do got a plickety plow, pickety plow. She don't got no va voom and Oprah shit. That's a good thing, right? But here's the thing. Women always say, oh, my gosh, she's so cute. She's so pretty. She's so smart. She's so educated. Why is she doing this herself? You know, I got beachfront property in Iowa to sell you if that is your argument. Just because somebody's smart. Just because somebody's beautiful, just because that someone got a beautiful shape, just because someone got a beautiful smile, and just because they're a woman, a woman, ladies, you need to get this thought process out of your head. Like, oh, why would you do this to yourself? Because she got a brain and she chooses to move this way. Because when men move stupidly, what do we say? Oh, that dude's a dumbass. Oh, oh, he an idiot anyway. I, hey, don't mess with that dude. What, men, we're honest. He's a dumbass. He's an idiot. Women, oh my God, why was she? She's so smart, dudes. He's a dumbass. Let's call it like it is. She's she's moving like a dumbass right now. 
Keep it a buck, y'all. Keep it a buck. Keep it a hundo. Continue. And, and listen, I'm speaking because I noticed, like I lived it, right? Oh, really? And I had mm -hmm. to do my own wake up call and recognize I'm dating the same guy, attracting the same guy. It always ends in so the Kendra, same way. So, Kendra, you can your buns blaze by like cookies. The shit for real. Like, I sit here humble, but I do know who I am. So, right. when you have us diluting. Hold on. Kendra's admitting that she's she's got down with Pookies and Ray Rays and she's done running. That's why she's 43 and single and got her ass frozen. Not no jab like that, but she's openly admitting. I've chosen these guys too before. You've chosen your Pookies too, Kendra. you chosen your rich Pookies because of the game you're in right now. We hear it right now. It's all good, girl. It's all good. Putting the pool, these men are never going to rise to the occasion. When they can get a guy like you, it's like, why do I have to... Be committed to one woman when I could get great women without right. Girls. So I agree. Yeah. But well, that's all about to change. That's why I had to get on your show. So now right. I can get all these quality men. Come on in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hold on. There is no quality men watching Kendra's show that's gonna be in your DMs. <laughs> no, that's why. Women, I swear, women are so slow at times. I hate to say that for my women, my tribe here, but I'm just saying the women that's calling the Kendra show are so slow here. That's why I'm your show, Kendra, so I can get some of these high quality men. H have we seen any high quality men in the Kendra show yet? Y'all, I don't do many reactions to the dudes that call in the Kendra show, but you guys seen the men that I had done that call in the Kendra show. OK, the men that be on Kendra's show either be gay, queer or pookie and Ray Ray's. Every once in a while, you might find one guy and that guy might be a little bit weird and off and a little bit of suspect. If you know what I mean here. So you over here. So that's why I'm on your show, Kendra. Hey, guys, I've done enough of these videos saying that I ain't seen no quality men in Kendra's show yet. The delusion and the range that we got going on here, guys. Come on now. All right, so let's do this. Okay, why would a guy be lucky to be with you, Essence? Oh, I'm ready for this. First of all, I got that Benjamin Button. Like, I just get better looking every year, Kendra. No lie. Um, so that's number one. Number two, I'm a I'm a pleaser. Um, I actually actively listen to the things that's important to you and that you want, and then I go implement that if I can do it. Um, um. I'm very um, helpful. I want to be your your place of peace, and I want you to be my place of peace. That's why I spoke about like people who like to argue and all that drama. I think none of that is necessary. If we have an issue, we should be able to talk about it calmly and come to a conclusion. And um, yeah, I, I want you to come home to me and, and feel at peace. Um, I don't have any debt. Um, I so I want us to, uh, someone I can like build something with, like be a power couple with. I'm established. I got to pause that here. I'm sick and tired of hearing about power couples, guys. We need to stop this power couple stuff. Not everybody's getting to the bag. Not everybody makes money. And power couples require so much more money than your six-figure income in project management. And if you're looking for another man who's making six figures, just because you make six figures and he makes six figures doesn't make you a power couple. You know what that makes you? A well-to-do couple. <laughs> Power couples is like Beyonce and Jay-Z, right? Combined, they're worth a billion. Two people make 100000 is not a power couple. Just a family that's doing really good in life. We got to end this power couple shit. Why you got to be powerful? Not everybody's going to be powerful. Why do you want, how about being happy? How about let's get together and be happy first. We'll figure out the power later. Because he's already working on his grind anyway. But power, no, I need you to be on my side. I need you to be a helpmate. I need you to fill in the pieces here. We'll get the power later. How about let's be happy first? We want to get to the status. We want to get to the wallet first. How about we get to know each other? How about you are with me because you are with me? You know, goddamn power couple. Got to end that. How many power couples there are in the game? Ain't that many. Average folks are not power couples. <laughs> right? If we are average out here in these streets here, you're not a power couple. You're someone doing really good in life financially. Shout out to T. Lee with the $5, man. Thank you. 
He coming through. I think he bought today's sponsor right now, I think, brother. Quality man probably already come in. They ain't won her. <laughs> hey, T. Lee. Hey, brother. Salud, man. Good point, man. Appreciate you for the holler, man. You coming through. I think you're today's sponsor, man. You came in multiple twos and you're dropping the fives here. I think you're here. Cordell's like, she lying. You want to be 38 and singles F right. My thing too, guys, if you want to be a power couple, you got to be married before you're 38, guys. If, if you really try to be a power couple, you got to be married before you're 38. You can't be 40 years old. So I'm like, yeah, I found. No, especially if you're average. You got to stop this stuff. You're doing well in life. You're not powerful. Just because you can buy a $500,000 house to make you powerful. It means you got good credit. You had a good down payment. You had equity from your old crib. Combination of those things. You drive a BMW. Cool. You got good enough credit to apply for the car loan. Or maybe you got bad credit and they hit you for 20, 20%. You got an S-Class Benz. You got a good job that they allow you. They get, they'll get you into any car note. Power couple? Power couple? Power couple? No, I'll be honest. What man said that they want to be in a power couple? I don't want my woman to be in a power couple with me. I'm trying to be happy. I'm, don't worry. I'm going to grind. I'm going to get mine. Right? Just need her to help me out and pick, pick, pick up the pieces. Power comes down the line if I'm looking for it, and that's the case it be. But I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, get, to the, get to the bag and be happy with my family. Men don't talk about being power couples. Only women. Let's continue, guys. Let's continue. Um, I don't need you, but I want you. And I think that's more important or to me in my mind. That should be more important. Um, oh, really? And and I'm humble. So sometimes people look at me and I don't need you. I want you. Ladies, you do need us. You need us and you want us. Know why I'm saying that? You want kids. So that means you need a man. You want to get married. That means you need a man to propose to you. You said that you want a power couple. You need a man to propose to you, to marry you, to have that good job, to have the finances, to provide for your finances so that you can be a power couple. You know how that works, guys? When, when a woman says, I don't need you, I want you. No, you need us. Plan. No, a man don't need a woman, unfortunately. I hate to say that to you, ladies. We don't need y'all, but y'all need us. We don't need you, but y'all need us. Oh, oh wait, Dave, Dave what, are you, what are you talking about? Whoa, 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 that dude, what are, you, what are you talking about? A guy can live out the rest of his days without a woman. He might be frustrated. He might be bearded, you know, think about he a caveman. Whatever, how you look at that man who's alone. You know you call those guys? You call them weirdos. You call them lonely guys. You call them hermits, right? But you know those guys who don't need women, who don't want women? They go and live on their own, and, and they don't complain about life and society. They do their own thing. You've seen those guys. <laughs> Whether they live in the city, the suburbs of the country, you know those guys and you rock and you've been around those men. Men don't need women if they feel like they, it's a losing battle, whatever the case may be. But women need men because women want families. And if you want a family, when men, something that, that's something that men don't really require. If you want a husband, that means you need a man. If you want kids, that means you need a man. If you want a marriage, that means you need a man to get down on one knee. See, when women say they, they don't need, they want, wrong. Wrong. Women need men. You need and want. Shout out to my man Rod here coming in with the 499. We're going to upgrade you to the $5 holla here. He said a lot of women went after the guy they wanted instead of what they need, and that left a lot of them getting skeeted on and cheated on. Thanks, brother. Thanks, brother. Thanks, man. Hey, Rod. Hey, Rod. Salud, man. Thank you for that holla. Exactly. Women don't understand wants and needs. 
I want a lot of things, but what do I need? Women, you want a lot of things, but what you need. If you want to get married, you need a man. She doesn't want to be single. If you don't want to be single, that means you need a man. If you want kids, you need. You hear this here? Need, not want. Got to drive that home. A man will decide if he says, I don't want to get married. I don't want to deal with these bandages. I'm just going to work and be on my own. And you know what we call those men? We call those men weirdos. It's like, y'all, Yo, you seen Mike? Yeah, he little out there, man. He does his own thing. He out there. He goes to work and he does his thing. He leaves work. And y'all just like, you, you think Mike's just weird. Mike said, the hell the banshees. I'm just going to work and mind my own business and live the rest out of my days. F these women. Those are the guys you call weirdos. And it's like, oh, what's going on with him? Man, he, he went on lumberjack type of dudes. You know, you've seen those guys like, around the way in your neighborhood or at work. They decided a long time ago, I don't need or want a woman. I I don't care about the situation. I'm a live. I'm a man. If something happens, I can go ahead and change the light bulb. I can go ahead and work outside of my yard. Women, these are things that you do need men for. I'm just saying. She was like, I have everything in my first shelf. Hold on. Let me get this, Sheila. What did you say, Sheila? I have everything in my first shelf. My brothers helped me when I moved. Yeah, see, Sheila, you're height. You need to do to get to the next shelf. I'm not, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's there's things that women need and want. But you can't say, I don't need a man. Yeah, you do. Unless you have resigned yourself to buy a cat or dog and die alone. And that you're going to go ahead and use Amazon to buy all your services. And then when you go on Amazon, you're going to pay for the installation or delivery charge. So you don't got to worry about anything. They deliver it. And if you need things installed, you can pay for the extra installation charge. You don't got to worry about anything. Then if that's the way you move, that's the way you move. Get a cat, dog, and die alone if you're cool with that. If you say, I want kids, I want marriage, you need that man. You need that man. Hey, before we move on here, I got to move. Hey, Ellis. He's a sponsor now, guys. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. Ellis is now the new sponsor. Ellis came with the purple. I, I saw this here, and Ellis came with the purple. So you know what that means, Ellis? Uh, uh, man, I got to do this here. Before we, before I give you the whole shin thing here, hold on, Ellis. I got I to gotta do some things here. Hold on here. Let me do this here, Ellis. I got to fix this here for you. And unless someone comes in and drops $100, Ellis is today's sponsor. Okay, here's what we're going to do here now. Boom. He's on the ticker now. Ellis is today's sponsor, guys. He came through, and he's doing a damn dizzle here. All right, now. He says, get at you, Dave. Got some business to handle. He got to leave. Oh, man, Ellis. Ellis over here got to leave, but it's all good, though. So, Ellis, here's the game here. Hey, first thing first, salute. You our today's sponsor, you are the lead one here. You are supporting and funding today's stream. Shout out to Ellis. He got to go. Ellis says he got some business to handle, but that's all right, though. You can, you've can you been here for almost a whole three and a half hours here. Whatever you see left over that you missed, you can catch on the replay, gang. Show Ellis some love, guys. Ellis is part of the Ain't Ish crew. He's been supporting your boy here. Show Ellis some love, guys. He came with the purple, guys. Ellis came with the purple, guys. Shout out to Ellis, man. I see you in the next show, brother. Appreciate you, man. I appreciate you. I got to put you on the rolling ticker here. So going forward here, if you catch the replay, you see your name here, and you see it up here, man. That's what I'm talking about. No doubt, man. No doubt, brother. All right, guys, let's get back to the video. And they assume that I'm, like, high maintenance or something, and I'm not. I'm very down to earth, and I'm a humble person. And, um, yeah. Yes, I love it. All right, Essence, let's um, let's okay. Well, you already have it at the bottom, right? Yeah, it's long. Yeah. I'm sorry, <laughs> but um, uh, it's uh the essence of relationships. So the dot essence dot you guys of it's on her screen, guys. That's essence, her IG. So I'm not pulling up because I already dot pulled it up. Essence dot of dot under. Okay, it's spelled at the bottom, child. It's spelled at the bottom, y'all. <laughs> I'm about to read it. Um, the dot essence dot of underscore relationships. Okay. All right. So, fellas, if you're interested, she's in DC, 33 to 45, um, 38 years old, Taurus, pro IT project manager, 
No kids. She doesn't want kids. All right, boo. Keep me posted how it goes, okay. baby. Thank you so much, Kendra. You welcome. Good night, everybody. Bye. Uh, That's the end of that video, guys. What did y'all think of her? What did y'all think of her, guys? Looks can only go so far. She is the epitome of looks can only go so far. She's cute. I seen some people drop sevens. I saw eights. I saw fives. Y'all might think I'm picky. I got high taste. She's adjustable six. No, I said she's adjustable six. She's 38 years old. She got a cute face, you know, but her face, you know, and everything is cute. She's not, she's not bad. She's not drop dead gorgeous. She's not beautiful. And does not, these are not insults. These are levels to what when we look at women, there's beautiful, there's gorgeous, just drop dead stunning. There's cute. There's pretty. I said, she's an adjustable six. You know what I'm saying? Adjustable six. Cause she, you can see how she's chilling around the house. I know she got a waist trainer on, but depending on how you rocking guys, right? If that's how she's rocking around the house, yo, I, <laughs> she can get it. She can get that D. You know, and you can tell like, you know, she dresses up, puts some makeup on, you know that she probably cleans up pretty well if she looks like that here. So that's why I adjustable six because when she's home chilling, she looks cute. I bet you when she puts and she gets cleaned up and puts makeup on, you know, you can say she's a seven or eight. I reserve nines and tens for like really gorgeous, beautiful, stunning women. You know what I'm saying? She's cute. She's attractive. She got a nice body and everything. But what else here? 38 years old. She's almost 40, guys. Women in wheelchairs get D. That's a fact, finance man. What's going on, brother? And get pregnant. Hey, you came in. Hey, you came in. Here. You came in here firing. I don't know if you've been commenting. I just happened to look down and I see you here. You came in here blazing. That's true. That's right, guys. So I see her someone who's cute, but not drop dead gorgeous or fine. There's levels to this here. And so women need to understand that. They say, yo, you're cute. But if you say you're cute, you're not fine. They get thinking, like, what are you trying to say? Not everybody's a goddamn 10. If every woman was a 10, then we wouldn't have a beauty standard. We wouldn't have these magazines that showcase these beautiful women and these centerfolds, right? Because everybody is beautiful, which means that everybody is the average. There's levels to this, you know, but we can tell why she's single. Unfortunately, because someone, when I say unfortunately, I see someone who is smart, you know, book wise to a degree because she got a good job. She's a project manager. You know what I'm saying? It's not like everybody could be a project manager. If that was the case, everybody would do that job and make good money. You know, but now everybody does it. PA Texas would tell you, you know, <laughs> not, every, not every project manager is good that we deal in the IT game, but it does pay a good salary. And if you're in the right company at the right time, you have good benefits and boom, you really can live a good life. Cordero's like, I'm sorry, she a pump and dump. Cordero, some guys look at that. That's what I'm getting to that, Cordero. Some people will look at that, especially at her age right now. If you're 38, moving where you're moving right now, you see Cordero's a man and that's how he looks at it. You, hey, I, I have a good time with you. You can sit down, we can have some drinks, might even go out to dinner, you know, but you won't be no foodie call on me. And after the fact, if we know we got a situation where that I know I can get it in, I'm going to get it in. A la like the guy that she's messing with right now, even though she said that this is not how I normally move. Yeah. <laughs> nah, it's, even if it's your first time, if it's continuing, this is how you move. He's like 38 year old women are miserable. Man, they are if they're not married, PA. <laughs> if they ain't married and they ain't got no man, <laughs> yeah, they're miserable. The 38-year-old women who've been mar who are married, they got their man, they chilling with them. They ain't miserable, PA. They living it. Average salary for an IT manager is 127 bare minimum. For a manager, yeah, Larry. For, for a manager, yeah. Project managers, that ranks is also depending on uh, the city and state. You know, Chicago pays damn good. But I know if you go to New York, they might pay an extra ten to fifteen thousand more a year. You go to LA and Silicon Valley, that job may pay about thirty or forty thousand more a year. But if you go to Kentucky, that one twenty-seven might be only ninety. 
Still good money though. Right, PA? That's what I was getting to that point. Project manager is not an IT manager. There's a difference, right? You could be a project manager and still not be a manager of your team because I, I do project management as well. You know, whatever the project is on, if I got to run that show, I'm the PM for that thing here. So you could be a PM, but not be an IT manager. In actuality, project managers actually can make more than IT managers, depending on what related field that you're working on in the company you're working for. Jergen's like, sorry, I could. <laughs> but she is the epitome of somebody who's done good successfully in her career, but she didn't prioritize her personal life, right? This is a woman here who probably, you know, did good in school. You know, she probably had a boyfriend in college. When she graduated, she cut that man off. She wanted to live her hot girl summer and got the good job outside of college, stuff like that. And then things kind of tumbled down the way here. She's working in IT. She's working in DC, you know, and then she's just going through these relationships, but nothing's materializing here. And then you wake up at 30 some years old, like, damn, I need to get married. I, I want some kids. Where'd my time go by? Where's life at? <laughs> You see that a lot out here in Chicago. The professional women who go ahead and get their degrees. Hey, I've been, I was in that situation one time. I was dating a girl a long time ago. And, you know, I, I mentioned a story about her. She went to school at Loyola. It was a damn good school out here, up on the up, up north off Sheridan in Chicago. You know? And when she graduated college and when she moved back home because school was done and she didn't have her own place no more, she kind of put the ghost move on me. Plain simple. She, I was the college boo, but then when she went home, she weren't checking for me. And what happened after the fact, the guy that she hooked up with who she married was the guy that she am divorcing. I, hey, I, I dodged that bullet. I was like, hey, you, she, she tried to get me after the divorce. I'm like, yo, you fucked up. I was right here. You graduated and went home and forgot about your boy. Now you're dealing with a salty ass divorce and everything like that, looking for a man. <laughs> I ain't gonna laugh at that, but that happens. So I'm looking at her situation right now. It's probably something similar. And now she's in her 30s, late 30s now. And she's like, man, my, my clock been ticking. Let me go ahead and see if I can get on Kendra's show right now. Let me see if I can find some of these DC men. I date DC men who make 100,000, but I need someone serious. The DC man I got right now is just blazing my guns and don't want nothing serious. That's the game, y'all. That's the game. You put too much focus on your career. You forget about the little things in life, the people who are there with you, especially the man you've probably been dating. And you're like, ah, I can do better. Next thing you know, you think you keep saying, I can do that and do better and do better and do better. Then you find some, some Pookie and Ray Ray situations. Next thing you know, hey, I'm 38 and I'm single and where are all the men at? Well, we're right here. We're on YouTube talking about these situations right now. And you know what we're saying? We are saying that you are too old for a serious relationship. Some guys, there's going to be some guys like, Dave, you tripping the blue pill niggas. <laughs> now, some guys are going to say, Dan, Dave, you harsh. 38 and she too old? I need to preference. She is too old for the man that she's looking for. I'm not saying that she is too old to get married. I'm not saying that she's not too old for a good committed relationship. I'm saying that she is too old for what she's asking for. If she was 28, so she could ask for this. You see how she's looking and she's a cute girl and everything like that. If she was 10 years earlier, she could ask for that. Wouldn't be a problem. If she was a few years earlier than that, she got the 25, 26, 27. Oh, the world's her oyster. Cute. Probably graduated from school, IT project manager, doing her thing in DC, young in her mid twenties. Yo, just be smart about it. Pick the right dude and give it, give it that man, that high value man, that Henry, and right off to the goddamn sunset. <laughs> nah, women don't do that, Cordero. Do they do that, Cordero? Cordero, you know what I'm talking about, brother. Eric, you know what I'm talking about. Finance man, you know what I'm talking about. Red Pill Jones, you know what I'm talking about. That Theo, you know what I'm talking about. That right? You know what I'm talking about, right? They have that guy. They've been with that guy. That man could, the man that she's looking for, she had that man already 15 years earlier, Cordell, right? Eric, right? She already had that guy. You know what though? 15 years earlier, that guy didn't make 100,000. You know what happened 15 years earlier when she was 38, she was like 28, like 23, or like that? That guy's probably making 50, $60,000 a year. 
but he wasn't on that level yet and he wasn't mature yet he was still young and still wet behind the ears and guess what happened though now those guys that were her school of her those guys that she was probably rocking with those go all those men now make over a hundred thousand a year all those men are over five nine tall all those men may not have kids or may just have just one kid not even dealing with all crazy baby mama drama but you know what happened though she passed them by because she thought that she could do better you guys may say dave you're, you're projecting you may be assuming too much here I'm just going by the playbook that we've seen over and over again. I've done over 300 videos on YouTube. I think that with me projecting here right now, I can come with a good assessment of things that happen when you're like this here, a good looking girl making good money and they can't find a man here. Then no one need to start doing. We got to stop blaming the man here and start looking at the woman here. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? We keep blaming men. All men are dogs. Sign language, shame, insult, guilt, need to be right. What's wrong with you? Why does everything got to be wrong with the man? Maybe you are too difficult to deal with. Maybe you have high expectations. Maybe you got a short fuse. Maybe your sex game is bad. We never ask these questions on the women, let alone we want to, you know, I ain't saying this, but what we hear, we call them these, some women want to call and say, you, you Kevin Samuels, uh, ites, you know, we, what about the high value women? You want to call her a high value woman? Then where's her man at to make her high value? There's nothing high value about her, about a man on her corner. She's just another single woman. What did Kevin Samuels say before he passed away, guys? Women her age? In China, this is China. We this is not a, a term that he made up here. Leftover women. Is she or is she not a leftover woman? Now here's the thing though, guys. It's not over for her if she dummy down this long dead sea dead sea scroll list of items. And she says, you know what? I need to throw away the $100,000 a year. I need to throw out this. I need to throw out that. I need to throw out that. How about this here? I want a black man. Let's start there. And is he working? And is he not a Pookie and Ray Ray? How about we start there? Then you got a chance. But if you want the man that every woman wants, then what are you selling that's going to say to those men out here in the market that you should be chose? Because you don't want to be called a pick me, but in a sense, that's what you're doing is look to be called a pick me. So if you're trying to be pick me, if you're trying to be chosen by this high value man, by this Henry high earner, not rich yet, this well-to-do man, or if he makes at least over a hundred thousand, how do you separate yourself from the same version of you who's 28 years old. Because if she's 38, there's the exact same version of her that's 28 years old that if they were side by side, what's the guy going to do? Oh, we got a project manager who graduated. Both of them are project managers and they go to, they both graduated from college. They're both like five, four, five, five. They both got the Coke bottle shake, plickety plow. They both got ass. They both got titties. They both got a nice smile, but not fine. They're just both sixes. Who do I choose? I choose the 28 year old, the young one who I know I can have a gang of kids with if I really want a gang of kids. Or do I choose a 38 year old who I'm not sure if I even have one. <laughs> See how that works? Why about we just tailor down that list? How about we find, is he a good man? Is he able to take care of himself? Is he, does he see himself as a provider? Have you been to the doctor to see if you even had kids? Because don't go to a man saying that you want to date and want to have a family and you're 38 years old and you ain't been to the doctor yet. So by the time y'all get together and get serious, you can't even have kids. <laughs> see, women don't look at that aspect either, guys. That if you're this age and you want kids, what have you done to even confirm that kids is even on the table? Because you find that man, you bring this man and you rope him in and you can't have kids. What's going to happen then? How many times have we heard situations where people's relationships ended because A, they couldn't have kids or they're the super dynamic when they lose a kid. 
children really make and break relationships, guys. Right? Children make and break relationships, whether you're trying to have kids or whether you lose kids in a very dire, bad situation. So let's say after the situation that she does find someone on Kendra's show, someone hit the DM, and this dude's a catch. Have you been to the doctor to confirm that you want something that this man wants as well? You see, at 28 years old, that man doesn't have to worry about that. It's called just keep trying. Raw dog, take the condom off. Just keep going. Keep going. Pause. If you're 28, you just keep going. You're doing. When you're 38, you got to go to the doctor. See how that works? 28, you just keep practicing. The 28, you keep practicing. 38, you got to go to the doctor to confirm. Keep practicing and nothing happens. Finance man said, Jones and Do Better Podcast, going to need you all to help a bro out and go give me that wrench when you go live. Jones, why don't you do live even for an hour? Oh, man. <laughs> okay, finance. I see y'all talking over there. Guys, get it, though. So, cute woman, good career. But it seems like she falls in the category of every modern woman who used their career, built themselves up, got a nice home, probably got money in the bank. But now what's wrong? No man. And now what you're looking for at 38, you're competing with every single girl that is 21 years old up to your age. And if a man had a choice be picking between the 21 year old women up to women younger than you, the 37 is who, who is he going to choose? Come on, guys. Ladies, you got to ask yourself that question. It is a competition in the dating marketplace. Now, I don't got a Patreon. Not yet. So that's what we got going on in the dating marketplace, guys. I think that's my time now, guys. I'm going to get out of here. We're almost at four hours today. Lord have mercy. I'm, I, 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 my lunch was steak and mashed potatoes that I made. I got ready for dinner, guys. And I got to go see my daughter. She's home from school. So your boys got to get ready to get out of here. We, we, we put in some time here. We, we got some more content we're going to drop this weekend, guys. We'll be back. It was dope. We had a little serious conversation with Megan Thee Stallion, and then we had the reaction video. I kind of switched up the format a little bit. I'm working on some things here for the show here. Don't worry. I'm going to make some announcements really soon here for the for top of 2023, guys. But as always, comment, like, subscribe, and click on that bell notification below. I want to hear what you guys think on this video here afterwards in the comment section. You know, Also, the fact, too, I got to go talk to this editor. I got to hire some people. You know what I mean? I got to put in the work. Hey, shout out to my man Rod here before I got out of here. He's, I know I got Ellis here, but I got to recognize here. Ellis is sponsor, but Rod's coming here with the full 99. This, this got to be the last super, guys. Uh, if you drop any more, I don't want to miss it. Full 99, he came with a $5 holler here. I've seen a lot of sisters have issues with fibroids. They got to take care and get it checked out. Facts, brother. Facts, Rod. That is a good. I'm glad you dropped that before I got out here. Women do have problems with fibroids. And you know what, though? They don't get it checked out until it's too late when they wonder they can't have kids. And a woman at 38 years old could fall in that same category. Good point, brother. Hey, yeah, man. We got good people in this chat, guys. We got great people here, man. Hey, 10 plus sounds. How you doing, brother? Glad to see you. Saw you last night. That's what's going on, man. So, yeah, I got to get out of here, guys. I got to do a couple. Of, I need to make dinner. I got to talk to the editor. I got to see this person's a yay or nay. You know, we're going to, I got to give them some, I got to give them some information and then have them work on some older videos and see if they style works out. You know, like I said, Rod's $5 holler, the $50 from Ellis, the $2 hollers. That's what it's going for here. I got to make better content. My money and then the money y'all give, boom. This is no longer going to be a team of one going to 2023. I got to hire an editor. There's going to be some other things that's going on in place here. You know, I'm a hired editor. I got to hire someone to help me with my thumbnails because I've been doing this all by myself here. I'm going to, I'm going to have, I'm going to have a, like a whole social media manager right now because with the promotion, I can only do so much. I can only be talent. So if I hire somebody to do these things here and I can help grow the channel. That's what we got going on here, guys. So yeah, I got to do some things here tonight, but best believe I'm going to be back this weekend. I'll be back this weekend, you know, 
we're gonna get this going here what's this here no i'm good on that one here do bears like i'm about to smoke a roll of bun as long as my arm hey i feel you theo i feel you i can't say some things so i don't know who's watching right now just know that uh, I I I enjoy what you're talking about there, Dio. It's gonna, that's all I'm gonna say there. I ain't trying to get in trouble for nobody. I am not getting in trouble for nobody. Dave about to bubble. <laughs> I gotta eat. I gotta do a few things here. I gotta hire some people. I gotta see if they worth the money and things of that nature. But it's all good though, guys. It's all good. This was fun, guys. This was fun. He's a what are you saying here? Uh, hold on here. Okay. I'm just finished bake some ziti. Cool. Cool. Okay, guys. This is fun, guys. Let me get out of here. Shut this down here. I got to do these, all these things. And also, we're going for content for this weekend here. So, oh, wait. Before I go, guys. Before I get out of here. Because Tito is packing for Vegas. My Vegas trip is going to be the weekend of January 27th. Before I forget, I talk about this more in next live streams here, but I'm going to Vegas January 27th. And Rod, you know what this is for here. This is for your Houston brethren, Charlo, Jamel Charlo, the undisputed champion at 154 pounds, the man at 154, junior middleweight. He got every single belt. There's no questions or qualms. He got the WBA. He got the IBF, the WBC, the WBO, and the Ring Magazine. He has cleaned out the division. He is defending all his titles against the son of Hall of Famer Costa Zoo, his son Tim Zoo, who is now the number one contender in the WBO. He's been waiting for this fight since last year. All right. He made his American debut last year and he's getting his crack on the weekend of the 27th. It's going to be at the Manilay Bay at the Michelo, Michelo Arena. And I'm saying this to let everybody know that if you've never seen a boxing fight in Vegas, this is the time to go. The Michelob Arena does not have a bad seat in the house. It is not a big time fight that's going to break the bank, okay? I bet your ringside is no more than $400. You can probably get some damn good seats close behind ringside for probably $200. If you're going to be in the upper decks, you're probably paying $50, bucks, guys. So I just want to put that out there that tickets are not on sale yet, but as soon as they go on sale, I'm trying to grab me one. But I'm gonna go. I'm planning my Vegas trip that weekend, so I just want to let y'all know about that. You know, so if y'all planning on a Vegas trip, that is gonna be the week because it's January. It's not peak season, and you might can find a good deal at a hotel. And I bet you that Vegas in January is probably warmer than anywhere you are at, especially me here in Chicago. Because <laughs> Vegas and Chicago, I mean, between Vegas and Chicago in January, you know what I'm picking. I'm picking the West Coast all day. So I just want to let you guys know that that is the game plan. That's the next boxing fight. They've been having press conferences, but they haven't announced the tickets yet. But if you're thinking about a Vegas fight weekend and you want to break the bank, I will be there that weekend. All right, guys, I'm out of here now. I'll be back this weekend. I'll talk more about that, but I just want to leave you guys with that. But until next time, I'm that dude named Dave. See y'all later, YouTube world. <laughs>